Good evening. Hello. Hello. How's your virtual trek going, Matt? Oh, still connecting. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. So I was, I looked down, I was like, I have not connected to audio. Sorry about that, gentlemen. How are you? Good. How's your virtual trek going? Uh, virtually done. <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, some hot miles this weekend. Oh my goodness gracious. Although yesterday, uh, Amy and I rode with some friends down in uh, OOB through Saco and it was, I think a robust 55 degrees down at Camp Ellis with a full bank of fog. Nice. Oh, that's... We rode, in, rode in land about seven miles and it went up to 80 awfully quick. Oh yeah, no, I, yeah, I did, a, I did like a 30 mile ride yesterday and it was probably, I don't know, 65, 70 and five. <laughs> For half of it, and then I got up to Fog Road and Scarborough, and it was like 85 yeah. and <laughs> the sunscreen on. <laughs> Hot <Talk> fast. <laughs> Hi, Valerie. Hey, how are you guys? Good, how are you? Hi, Debbie. Good. I was just out at Fort Williams earlier, and it's really foggy. Really, really fogged in, yeah. The horn will be working tonight. <laughs> Yeah, rolled into my house. It took it all day to get there. Uh, it was about 8.30 last night. Uh, it finally arrived, uh, ten, you know, 10, 12 miles inland, and uh, it was nice. Felt good after Friday and Saturday. Hey, Chief. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you, sir? I'm doing all right. Evening, Caitlin. Hi. Hey, Jamie. Hey there. <coughs> Evening, Benny. Hi there. Who's here? Whoa. Almost full house.
Hey, Valerie. Hey, sorry, I'm just a little bit late here, but ready to jump in and get started. Okay, let me just pull up my materials. All right. Um, so, welcome everyone to tonight's workshop. Um, this is a workshop meeting. It will be followed by a regular town council meeting to implement any, any policies or any action that we decide is necessary for this evening. Um, but the purpose of a workshop is for counselors to be able to discuss things. Um, the items on tonight's agenda are related to um, racial injustice and what actions the town should take at this point. Um, so to begin, we do have a period for public comment. Um, I did just want to make a, a brief statement before we get started. Um, as I noted, we are here addressing racial injustice and in reflecting on this and in preparing for tonight's meeting, it dawned on me that we are behind the ball on this. And so I want to apologize on behalf of myself as the council chair and all of the leaders who have waited for this moment to take action when this is really something that we should have addressed long ago. Um, we're not proud of this lapse. I'm not proud of this lapse um, in leadership, but we're here this evening. And I see this as the beginning of something, the beginning of a discussion. We'll move forward from here. Um, and that's, that's what we'll begin tonight. So I did also reach out to Jim Rowe, who is the president of the Cape Elizabeth Historical Preservation Society. I was hoping that we could start the evening by talking about some of the black history in Cape Elizabeth. And sadly, there is very little. And I think that highlights why it's so important for us to do this work. Um, he was able to tell me essentially that there were two notes about black history in the materials that his um, group has, and they both relate to slaves. So one was um, identifying George Cleves, who's the founder of Portland as a slave owner, and the other as Ezekiel Cushing as a slave owner. And sadly, there is no other mention of black history in this town. So I think that that's something we can discuss moving forward, how we can highlight the history of, um, of those individuals who have not been recognized in our history um, at this point. So, public comment period. Um, I think all of us probably recognize that this public comment period is vital because a lot of our work here is listening. Um, we are a privileged group and we need to hear what our constituents have to say, particular, particularly those constituents whose voices have historically not been heard. Um, given the importance of that, we usually have a 15 minute period with the consent of the other counselors. I'd like to allow the public comment to exceed 15 minutes if that is necessary. Um, I'm getting some thumbs up and nods. So we'll go ahead and do that. I do want to ask people to please try to limit your comments to about three minutes per person. Um, that is to allow everyone an opportunity to speak um, out of respect for your fellow attendees. Please try to keep your questions and comments relatively concise, but we also want to hear what you have to say. So, um, you know, don't, don't omit something just because you're worried about going over that by 30 seconds or so. Um, we do usually respond to questions after the period. So I'll kind of make note if there are questions that come up of the questions that people have, and then we'll come back to that once the council begins our work. Um, and also I'd like to ask that we prioritize um, the voices of those who have been historically marginalized. So um, people of color, I'd like to invite to use the space for comments before others. And I'd like to ask um, those of us, those in the attendance who are coming from a more privileged background to please just hold back a few minutes, um, allow some space for people to raise their hands. And then, you know, maybe after after five minutes or so, begin raising your hands, but just give that initial space. And we do have, there is sort of a hierarchy to the hand raising so we can see whose hand went up first. And that's the order that we go in. Um, and, you know, it, 
we're not asking that that those individuals do all the work here. So we also want white allies and people of privilege to speak up and voice what we think is necessary for that for the work that we're doing tonight. Um, but I just want to make sure that there's space for others. So with that, we will open the public comment period. I see there are already two hands raised. And um, Matt will go through and unmute you. If anyone else is unfamiliar, if this is your first time, you can just use the raise hand feature. Matt unmutes you and then you have an opportunity to speak. So Melanie Thomas is our first um, attendee who is going to comment. Oh, and I'm sorry, if you could just identify yourself by name and address, that's for the, for the notes this evening. Um, also for the record, we do have about 37 attendees at the moment. Um, and uh, yep, so go ahead, Melanie, it looks like you're on. Um, hi, my name is Melanie Thomas, Six Star Board Drive, Cape Elizabeth, uh, member of Cape Diversity Coalition. Um, I wanted to say that my children and I have lived here in Cape for seven years now, um, and that all three of us are born and raised here in Maine as well. We proudly represent that very small one percentage rate of people of color here, and I'd like to be their voice tonight. So my thoughts are that the town has failed people of color in all aspects, and that is very unacceptable, perhaps somewhat shameful. You must do better, and thankfully today is a new day to do just that. Our community is looking for clear leadership and an understanding of your stance against racism, racial injustices, lack of diversity, and usage of signs that can and will be used to display our town stance. Um, our black history is unknown here, and that is a statewide issue, but I'm hoping that Kate can start um, doing better so other towns can follow your lead. Basically, I'm saying that I just feel like your statement should have come weeks ago, weeks ago. Your stance should have come years ago and your diversity subcommittee should have come decades ago. In my opinion, um, I think you just need some type of outside source of bias training um, to all the town leaders. I think that's very necessary and would bring a better understanding. I also think in my opinion that the lack of diversity here um, in Cape needs to be addressed on a more frequent level. Um, I just think there needs to be more affordable housing and both of those issues need to be talked about and addressed regularly. Um, I could say much more, but I truly appreciate you all. I thank you so much for listening to me mm -hmm. and all that you are going to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melanie. Um, Paul S is next. Hi. Uh, just as one of the m most privileged people, honestly, um, I don't want to take much time at this moment. Maybe I will at the end. I just wanted to ask a, a question as a workshop. Is this being recorded and will it be available on the website just as regular meetings are? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, it, yes, it is, Paul. Uh, uh, thank you for that question. We will uh, generally, I get it. Uh, forwarded to me by uh, Zoom by the time I get home, and then I forwarded it to our webmaster and she has it on uh, the next morning generally. So thank you for that question. Paul, did you have anything else to add? Maybe later, I just like Valerie, I loved what you said and um, you know, just want to create that space for other voices. I know that Melanie was speaking on behalf of several folks, but just in case there are others who want to speak, I'll kick back for a while. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nasser, you're up. It looks like mute may be on, on your end. Okay. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Okay, so I feel the opposite uh, of you guys tonight. Uh, I thank you for giving the time 
and the uh, two people of color to voice their uh, opinion first. But where's, where's where I stand, um, I'd like to hear from you guys first, what is possible, what is capable. And then, like Paul said, I will state my opinion or my questions. Because living here in Cape Elizabeth for 23 years and living in Maine for close to 32 years, uh, I've seen everything, I've heard everything when it comes to me, especially after 9 11. Uh, discrimination against Muslims. And at the time, I was fairly young and I did speak a lot and I continue to speak to you as you guys know uh, to educate those who are surrounded, uh, those who are surrounded by me or those who I'm surrounded by. Uh, after 9-11, I did a lot of education on behalf of Afghanistan, behalf of Muslims. And ever since then, I've been trying to make this place a better place. My, what is my neighborhood? What is my community? I've been involved with Keep Elizabeth uh, prior to being on the school board. I've been, I was also on the Conservation Commission. I love volunteering. I love dedicating my time. And I worked in Afghanistan for about nine years with the UN. And when I came back, it's different. It is different. Different meaning that I do not have the same energy, power um, as I did before. Is because everything I do now, everything I say now, I have to think about my five kids, my brother's five kids, my sister four kids, uh, my other brothers, three kids, and every action I take, I think about them. When I was young, no kids, no marriage, or maybe just young, and as I could walk the talk, I could do anything I wanted to. So, though I personally have not felt any negativity in this town, uh, we in Muslim culture, in Arabic, say Alhamdulillah, with the will of God. However, as you probably heard from that evening and other evenings, and the reason I joined the school board is because of my daughter, who was told indirectly when the President Trump was elected that all Muslims will be deported uh, due to the fact that we have a new president. My boy, Hamza, on the bus was told to go back where you come from. And luckily and proudly, uh, my daughter did inform me about this. And uh, whereas my son did not, he was young, uh, but my daughter was in high school. So my sister and I open heartedly went to superintendent, school board, um, staff. And we said, we're not interested in disciplining anybody. We're not interested. Uh, take any action or anything of that nature. We want to know what we are doing wrong. We want to know what is the school doing wrong. We want to make a difference in this town. We lived here for 23 years or so. So in return, we, we established a Keep Diversity Coalition. And uh, uh, we in my house personally, I've opened my doors during Ramadan and Valerie in here is one of the persons who have attended a couple times and, uh, and I'll try to make a tradition and I'm trying my best to educate individual people around me. The question is now, what is the school board and what are you the town council? doing the best to educate people around you. I have single-handedly done my best to educate people around me. So like uh, Melanie said beautifully, 
uh, haven't met her yet, but I guess I don't want to say we were one of the first cholera people in the town, but I'm very happy for people like her and people like Khatija who are basically raising the voice that I've been and my family have been raising for a long time. And it's very, very good to have such allies. And though there's no direct discrimination, there is unconscious discrimination that I have felt and seen and witnessed. So back to education. What are we doing for education? Frankly, I could care less for you guys or for all of us to diversify Cape Elizabeth. Let's make the few people who are here, who are people of color, let's make them happy. Let's let them say the positive stuff to their friends, their neighbors, their acquaintances, their people in the, in the community. Let them say that. Let them advocate. For so far, personally, I cannot advocate. Aside from great education, Cape Elizabeth, there's not, nothing else for me to advocate here, to live here. And education is the reason I came here. The education is my number one priority in life. Number one. And that's why I joined the school board. And this is where I do not want to see any kids. Any kids. I don't want people to be incorrectly saying things in the locker room or while they are listening to rap music or action just must be, to be had to be half. And again, I hope to save some of this conversation for tomorrow and the school board is having a, a similar workshop around diversity. And I'm sure I'm beyond the three minutes. And I'm sorry I got a little bit emotional. My voice is changing. My wife is trying to give me some tea. And I'll stop right here and then I can add later. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nasser. Um, Saira is next. Hi, can you hear me? You are alive. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Saira Shear. Um, I'm Nasa's daughter. Um, I also live in Cape Elizabeth. Um, I grew up in Cape Elizabeth. Um, for most of my childhood, um, I've been here and there um, in other countries, but mostly I've been in Cape Elizabeth. And recently, it's been a year since I graduated from USM with a biology major. Um, so I'm glad you guys made this meeting, even though it's a little late, um, maybe like four years late, but, um, um, thinking about last week's protest, um, although it's a protest for Black Lives Matter, um, a lot of students of color came and spoke up. And it wasn't supposed to be that long. It went on until like nine o'clock. And that was because of all the voices that were silenced by Cape Elizabeth students, the people of color. Cape Elizabeth hasn't really done anything for them. So, uh, and you guys really have less than a hundred um, people, um, people of color residents in, your, in this town. So it shouldn't be that hard to accommodate them. Also, um, the school curriculum um, in uh, Cape Elizabeth should be changed. Um, Cape Elizabeth prides itself in its school system when it's literally basically the same thing as every other school. I don't know why you guys pride yourselves with it, but it's the same thing. And it's not much different. Also, if if you guys want to char um, start with small changes, we have a whole year of U.S. history in high school, junior year, and you only like literally spend one week of it with like uh, talking about slaves and one week of the whole year. That should be changed. You guys could literally take out one month to just talk about black history. Also using the N-word in schools um, by teachers during readings, um, having teachers wear dreadlocks, cultural appropriation, and not having them reprimanded, that causes trouble, especially, especially when kids are 
you doing racist comments or using the n-word those kids are will grow up to be racist teachers healthcare workers cops lawyers and um uh, any workforce and th they will hurt other people i can assure you that so you guys should start young with your students with the residents here so that doesn't have to happen also if um like my Melanie said, um, bias training is very, very necessary for teachers and for you guys, obviously. And um, like my dad said, um, they came to you guys four years ago, but nothing happened. And it's unfortunate that a black person had to die for this to happen because it's been going on for centuries. Um, yeah, sorry, I have some notes. Um, so yeah, um, I think that Cape, the Cape, Cape Elizabeth town hasn't really done anything for its people of color. And uh, I think it's about time you guys do something because it's very, very, very emotionally taxing and it traumatizes a lot of students who have to go through these racist comments. And uh, we need to look out if we, we need to look out for these youth, if nothing else. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I forgot a lot of things, but thank you. Thank you very much, Syra. Syra. Um, Gina Tapp is next. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, Gina, your microphone is live now. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so um, we have lived in Cape Elizabeth since April of last year. And in August of last year, we welcomed an asylum seeker teenager into our home. And we now have guardianship of her. And she's from the DRC in Africa and she attends Cape Elizabeth School. And I just, I am so happy with her teachers and how her teachers have embraced her and helped her. And I want to put this big giant bubble of support and embrace around her here in Cape Elizabeth. And I yet, to be honest with you, I'm so afraid of putting our Black Lives Matter sign out on our yard. And I speak to you honestly as good people we're a very white privileged community and i know that everyone wants the best from everyone and i want you all to feel the same feeling we have of supporting this person in our home it's not just our home it's our community i just ask that you recognize that um, part of our community is people from not just the american african community but outside in other countries and what that can mean and, and what the great education that we're giving this girl and that she's flourishing. And I want her to become part of the Cape community and we'll do everything we can to make that happen. And I just ask for your support in making that happen and recognizing all the diversity. I also just want to say that I, I really respect the words of Nasser. I work with him for the with him at the city of Portland. And I know that his family has been here far longer than what than we've been here. And I consider him a good friend and a confidant. And um, I think we're lucky to have him on the school board. And that's that's really all I want to say tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Um, Okay, there are no other hands raised. Uh, I'll note for the record that there are 52 attendees at this point. Um, we definitely appreciate the attendance at these meetings. Um, okay, looks like we now have two hands. Um, Shukriya. I'm sorry, I'm trying to unmute this. I actually wasn't planning on talking, but I feel like I have to. Um, I'm glad you said my name pretty nicely. Um, Shukriya, we are, I live at 420 Mitchell Road. 
and I'm a sibling to um, Nasser. So um, we have a big family here. We uh, there's a lot of shared family here in Cape Elizabeth, and um, and a branch off. So they're on 77 in Spurwink, and I'm the branch off on Mitchell. Um, I appreciate what Melanie had to say, what Nasser had to say, as well as his daughter or my niece. Um, we've been here for 23 years. Um, we grew up in Portland, Maine. Um, I, I feel a little different from Nasser. I do feel that there is a um, hostile environment in some ways here. Um, when your little, your little child comes in saying that, you know, they think that she's black when she's not really black. She's a, you know, a nice, not saying that blacks are not, but she has brown skin. And, it, you know, it's, 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 um, it's the environment we are in. They don't, uh, people are not exposed to different colors in, in Cape Elizabeth. Um, as Nasha mentioned, this, um, our, you know, Cape uh, Diversity Coalition came in uh, about four years ago with the current um, administration. It came in because our, our kids were being harassed um, and something had to be done. First thing superintendent is told us that we will find the people and we'll basically punish them. We said we don't want them punished. We want we want A, B, and C, and D, and E, and F, all the list of things that nothing came out of it. Nothing came out of it. We were trying to pass a welcoming resolution with the council where Portland and other communities was so easy to do. And it was very difficult to do here because we didn't want to step on anybody's toes. We didn't want to make it political. It's a welcoming, it's a human thing. We welcome you as a person of a color, as a white, as anything. You're welcome to come here, no matter what your religion is, no matter what your culture is, no matter what your sexual orientation is, you are welcome in Cape Elizabeth. That was hard for us to do here. Um, so I, I wanna see the niceness in Cape Elizabeth, and there is, there's a lot of good people here. There's a lot of good people, and a lot of these good people are coming out now. Um, this meeting should have happened about a, you know, a few weeks ago. The recommendations that we had proposed to the superintendent should have happened four years ago. We wanted simple things. We wanted a representation of what we are we wanted uh, someone to look like us, to act like us. You know, we wanted someone, a person of color, just to, you know, we have an ELL teacher, perfect opportunity to have a person of color. I know this is more of a school thing, um, a person of color representing us. But um, if you go into the economy, there's affordable housing, there's no bus station, uh, bus service, there's a lot of things. And I, I sent you, um, Valerie, I did send you an email about the CDC recommendations, which we still want to move forward. Um, but um, it is hard. It's been hard. Uh, I feel like things are done a little slower in Cape Elizabeth. And um, I'm a person who wants things to be stirred up and gone forward. And I think it needs to happen at some point right now. We need to wake up. We are slowly waking up. And there's people who are awoke already here and wants change. And I think um, we need to do something. And we need to start to hear from our elective, you know, we need to hear from you counselors. And we need to hear from the school board, of course, and we need the police and we need all these people to just back us up to having, you know, I've come and I've talked to so many teachers and we have great teachers and trying to make, come up with events to just propose anything in Cape Elizabeth. And there was, nobody took off on that. Nobody took off on that. So, um, I, I'm a little scared that nothing's gonna come out of this meeting either, but I have to keep a positive attitude about this. Um, but I think Cape Elizabeth has a lot 
to do. And I think we could be an amazing, amazing role model for every other little town. Uh, I think we have a we have a community that's willing to step up right now and to do more. And I think this is the time. So please, please try to come up with actual um, item lists that are gonna be becoming reality and not just listening to us, but making it happen for us. Um, you know, the minute we leave Cape Elizabeth, the minute we leave Cape Elizabeth, the minute we leave Portland, I mean Maine, sorry, Cape and Maine, there is rainbow of color, rainbow of color in the world. And we owe, we owe it to our, to our white brothers and sisters and their kids to represent the world here in Cape Elizabeth because it's a tough world out there and we need to be prepared for it. Um, thank you. I think I went over my three, hour, uh, three minutes too, but thank you. And I am absolutely happy to, to talk or be a, on any kind of committee that needs to go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Shukriya. I, I don't see an email from you. Um, so I, I think you said you sent an email. Yeah, I did send an email with, we had done, um, the Cape Diversity Coalition um, did a list of um, items from economy to housing to school uh, to be added as part of the comprehensive um, plan. And um, so I sent that in 2018, but I sent, uh, I forward this recently to you, like maybe a couple of days ago, but I'll check on, I'll check on it and I'll try to make sure that all of you get it, not just you, Valerie, but everyone else. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Audra Gore is next. Hi, um, I am new to this, I just, am realizing what is happening in our community. And the first moment that it really hit me was when I considered putting a Black Lives Matter sign in my yard. And I'm white, I'm at 215 Two Lights Road. And I felt fearful. And that was the moment I realized I had to put a sign in my yard of support. And over the next weeks, I was driving through Cape Elizabeth and realizing you would never know that there's this incredible movement happening and I talked to other neighbors who had put signs in their yard and they too were worried that they were going to have stones thrown through their windows and I think that that speaks to the the bigger issue here which is it's not clear how our town council stands how our community stands on this issue as a whole and I want there to be public expression. I want my kids to hear that. I want them to see that it's not just, you know, a few families trying to self-educate and, and rally and make change. I, I, I want that from our town. So, but in order for it to be a community effort to support black members in our community and people of color in our community, we need to realize that our normal everyday forms of communication just are no longer intact. We don't t stop and talk at the grocery store and whatnot. So I would like to see more creative methods of communication to be more deliberate in alerting and inviting people within our community to these vital conversations. That's what I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, John Volz. Hi, um, John Volz, 33 Phillip Road. I'm sorry, I missed the uh, earlier part of the meeting, so some of what I may say may have been covered. I just wanted to uh, add support to uh, making the types of long-term structural changes that some of the folks are talking about. And I think that um, <clears throat> to do that, we really want to look at how do you integrate that with some of the management structures that are already in place. And what I would urge you to do is think about how um, you can go through and update 
the comprehensive plan, which I think you will be wanting to do anyway, as this is 2020 is a census year, and much of the comprehensive plan is based on 10 year old data. So we would want to be updating significant portions that relied on old data anyway. But that's a good long time frame that you can make robust changes around and think about how you can put in these sorts of structural things that fit in to the comprehensive plan around things like housing, transportation, et cetera. I think that's the way that you are able to make fundamental changes and look at the things, what do you measure around and report on around public safety? And how is that reflected in your comprehensive plan? Those types of things. So it's just a suggestion of how you can take what you're currently thinking about in terms of real structural changes and put it into our real structure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Maureen Clancy. Good after, Good evening, everyone. My name is Maureen Clancy. I live at 11 Hemlock Hill Road. So um, we live in a racist system and a racist country and a racist community. The images we see in the media, TV, movies, etc., have an impact on us. And if we don't have any experiences to show us otherwise, this is what we know. The more I go on this journey, the more I see what I learned in school, what I was taught, where I was raised in the small town, white town that I grew up in, the experiences that I had shaped me in a certain way. Now I've had other experiences in my life. I've lived in another country where I was the one who looked different from everyone. I've work with staff who come from the Middle East and Asia and South America and Africa. And so I've realized that the way we make these changes is by experience. The only way for me to know that the black thugs, thugs that I see on TV are just an image and that the young black man that I saw with his do-rag speak the other night who spoke of this amazing poem the only way I do that is if I experience that. I still have these, I catch myself when I, these images come up, but it's my experience, it's my background. And I worry and I, you know, I'm somewhat angry at myself for raising my children in this town, just like the town I was raised in because it was so white and we lacked so much of that experience. So I think the only way that we can change our society and move to a more anti-racist stance is to have more people in our lives that don't necessarily look like us. So I think as our town, I would like to see us have a inclusion committee on our council and our school board. I think we should have, the first thing you should find is a diversity statement when you look at the websites of a town or a school, which tells us or a police department, which tells us how those departments see these issues. We need policies around housing, police, school, employment. I asked my son, who's 18, I said, who is the first black adult you came across um, in Cape Elizabeth? Not the ones he's met through my work or things or our home. He said, the first one mom was a CNA when I worked at the landing. Nobody in his school, nobody in the town, nobody that he came across in any other place. But so if we only see people as day laborers and, and low wage jobs, if we don't see any people in places of power and places of influence, that makes a difference to how we see people. So I think we need to look at the policies in our town that will make a difference. Training will only go so far if you have no personal experiences. We can't teach all of our teachers to have, to be anti-racist. We have to have people in the schools who um, help to counteract the images and the messages we get. And granted, it's gotten worse. I mean, did you see what our president said today about one of our Somali um, state legislators, you know, we have to find ways to address this locally and in any place we can, because um, if we decide that we as a town would like to move towards an anti-racist stance, I guess that's all I can say for now. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, it looks like Gina has a hand raised again, but before coming back to Gina, which we will do, um, I just wanted to see if there's anyone else who hasn't spoken yet um, who would like to speak. Okay. Uh, Halima. Hello, hi, can you hear me? Yes, all right. Um, hi, I'm Halima. I am uh, Nasser's daughter and Shukriya's niece. Um, I graduated last year and I am one of those kids, <laughs> Nasser's daughter, who was um, targeted on, uh, when President Trump was elected. And I think those four years, uh, like my aunt said and my dad said, nothing has changed which is kind of sad since my brothers are still in school, my cousins are still in school. And uh, I think it's just, we're all really tired of hearing the, all these stuff happening when nothing has changed. No actions has been taken. People are only saying stuff, but it's not going any further. And I just hope you guys uh, just go take baby steps to make change. And, uh, I have a lot to say, but some people already said it, but I think when, when my point was uh, my brother Adil, he is in go to high school now, but he was, um, his grade has been targeting him or like call, um, asking him for the N-word pass when he's not even black, because just because he looks darker, they think he is black and he can say the N-word or people can ask him for the N-word pass, which is just absurd because he there he's a ninth grader almost and these kids are already saying the n-word and just because a black person says it is, does not give them the right to say it or ask for them for a pass because it's i went over this with my father and all of them that you know it's the n-word is for black people to say and i think just when people, especially the kids, say it, we should call them out on it and teach them that not to say it because that's, it starts from there. And like, I did not even know the N-word until like maybe like two years ago or something. And I'm 19 years old. So it's just kind of really sad. And um, yeah, I think like my sister said, Cyrus said, uh, we should start with school system to change the school system because we, um, I don't remember anything, nothing about black um, history that I have learned in school, nothing. The, re the reason why I am educated now on black history, not even that much, I'm still educating myself, is because of social media. Because I have been reading articles and after articles, after articles, after videos, all, them, all these stuffs. So, um, yeah, so I feel like, the school should do a better job on educating them and, you know, especially the new the little kids that are coming to into high school. Um, yeah, and so there's lots of uh, racial jokes that people tell, like my brother, or all that stuff. So it's, it goes on and on and on. Like, I feel like this meeting is not even enough to ex uh, express our what has happened in our year, time of years and whatever. So it's just, there's a lot. And my brother has gotten um, those hard times too and all that. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Just, uh, yeah, I'm just losing my train of thought right now, but I'll jump in when I have everything back in my thought. Thank you, Halima. Um, anyone else before we come back to Gina? Clifford? You may just need to unmute yourself on that side. Is that better? Thank you. So I, I was just saying that I disagree with the notion that we live in a racist town. I'm a transplant here myself, and I find everybody in the town welcoming. And uh, 
I don't know that we need to make any more statement about who we are and where we are than how we live our lives every day. There are always going to be problems, uh, but those I think are in the minority. I don't think we have a big problem going on systemically. And I just wanted to throw a hat in the ring for the other side of the story here. Thank you. Okay. Um, anyone else before we return to Gina? All right. Um, oh, Eliza. Um, hi, council members, can you hear me? Great, thank you. Um, my name is Eliza Matheson. I'm at 270 Fowler Road. Um, I have one child in this Cape School system right now, um, and another one will come up. Um, I went through the Cape School system, kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, I moved, went to college in New Hampshire, lived in Colorado, moved back to Portland, lived in Portland for a few years. Um, and when my spouse and I decided to move out of Portland, um, one of the biggest challenges for me was um, moving to a less racially diverse community, which um, you know came with the territory, um, and moving back to my hometown, which also um, had pros and cons as well. So um, I'm pretty, I feel pretty steeped in the Cape community. Um, I love it here. I love that I get to raise my children here. Um, I don't consider myself a, an expert in any, by any means on um, race relations. Um, I have done some diversity and equity and inclusion work um, at the collegiate level. Um, but I, I would like to take this moment to ask all of us to do some of this work ourselves in self-educating um, in how we can come up with better ways to address the systemic um, problems that exist in Cape Elizabeth and everywhere. Um, and I know most of this has kind of focused around the schools, um, but I would also, um, I think it's no secret that our, our housing options and our transportation options and our business center options are um, just um, really tied to the, the top tier of incomes, um, which is all interconnected with, of course, um, racial diversity, socioeconomic diversity, etc. Um, I don't want our students of color to have to parade themselves out in front of the town council and relive trauma to talk about what needs to be done at the systemic level. So that's on us. Um, I hope that we can all um, force ourselves to sit down, read, follow different thinkers, engage in conversations, and um, challenge what we find to be a very comfortable existence um, here in Cape Elizabeth. I look forward to being involved with this for many years, so you may see me back here. Um, and thank you for the time. I hope it didn't take up too much or take up anybody else's time. Thank you. Thank you. I did see a couple hands pop up after um, a, a recent comment. And I just want to mention that um, this is not necessarily a space for a back and forth. And I understand there may be a desire to have that, but, but this is an opportunity for the council to um, hear these comments, which we'll then delve into in our discussion um, and have a little bit of a back and forth among the council. Um, and also just to note briefly that um, although there may be some opinions expressed that are not in the majority, um, it is important out of respect for freedom of speech, which is vital um, in this type of forum and in this country, just to let those comments come out and then we can proceed to discussion a little later. Um, so we do have, uh, and I applaud, Gina, thank you for your patience, but I do want to make sure that we take comments that from people who haven't spoken yet. So Anne Carney. Thank you very much. Um, and thanks for recognizing me. Um, I just wanted to observe that um, I do think there's a stark contrast between Cape Elizabeth 
and the other communities that surround us with regard to the diversity in our community. And I, I really love Shukriya's vision of um, a rainbow of color in Cape Elizabeth, just like in the rest of the world. I think that that would uh, really um, change our community um, for the better. I also want to um, focus on the approach that Nasser recommended we take, which is to talk about what's possible. And I would just love to see the council focus on that. You know, what are the steps that we can do um, to create more affordable housing? There, there must be uh, changes that we can make to our zoning ordinances and um, maybe partner with nonprofit groups to to change that in transportation there there must be ways that we can facilitate uh, transportation that allows people to come into Cape Elizabeth um, and go out of Cape Elizabeth to enter in uh, the rest of the world and then also um, what is possible on the school level the observation that um, we only spend one week of our American history year on um, the history of, of African Americans and people of color in our country. And let's start talking about what we can do in specifics to change that. And um, I love to, to help and support that conversation in any way I can. Thank you. Thank you. Priscilla? It looks like you unmuted yourself and then muted again, so we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Good. Um, well, good evening, everyone. And um, my name is Pastor Priscilla Draymond. I'm one of the ministers at Cape Elizabeth United Methodist Church. And um, although I'm a resident of South Portland, and um, we're doing a lot of soul searching, at, uh, looking at our, ourselves at the church, mostly people um, retirement age um, and older. And, um, and I know in my own self that, that although I've grown up in diverse communities and led a diverse nonprofit arts organization for many years, um, that I am a racist and I, uh, I know I carry biases from the time I was very, very little. And so that um, I catch myself if I'm driving in a particular neighborhood and look around and lock my car doors. I mean, that's an act of, of bias, um, which I regret. Um, but I look when I see someone walking down the street of my neighborhood um, of another race, um, I, I notice and, um, and wonder why they might be there and, particular neighborhood where I live. Those are acts of racism. And, um, and I really want to work to be stronger and, um, and way more open. And, and so one thing our church is doing, and this came at the suggestion of USM, is our church together is reading How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram Kendi. I don't know if you can see me, but I have the book here. And um, USM is taking on reading it as an entire community, both faculty and students. And how exciting, what an opportunity um, for all of us to look within. And that as white people, um, there's a ton of homework I know uh, we need to do as a church and I know I need to do as an individual. So I see this as a time where maybe we could pull together um, and do some study as a community and be part of a greater conversation going on in greater Portland. Um, this, we have time to be doing this, those of us who have to be confined to home right now. Um, this, is, this is an opportunity. So um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we can come back to Gina. Um, if there's anyone else who'd like to speak after Gina, um, please do raise your hand because we will prepare to close the comment period after this. Um, but I do want to make sure that people have an opportunity. So 
put your hand up now and we'll make sure that you have that chance. Okay, Gina, go ahead. Okay, so I just want to make sure um, of everything I've said tonight that I make it clear that I'm so happy and proud of the Cape Elizabeth school system for what they have done to welcome Marceline into their community on like literally two weeks notice and put this big bubble of great education around her. And that is something I think we can do in many more areas. I'm just so happy that she found that in Cape Elizabeth and I'll do anything I can to work with whoever I can to make sure that continues so that she has a great opportunity in Cape Elizabeth. And that's all I have to say. Um, Nasser? You may need to unmute yourself. Okay, uh, I need to make a comment in reference to throwing a, a hat in the ring from the other side. And I am very happy he made the comment because we need to hear such voices. I'm truly speaking from the bottom of my heart. My goal is not for all of you up here to win your hearts. My goal is to win the hearts of such people. I'm honestly speaking because he is right. Right now, after 9-11, Muslims were a target. So we had to give them an attention. And then now is Black Lives Matter. Tomorrow, maybe something else. And so just remember this, that we, whatever decision you, the council, make a decision on, it's not just Black Lives Matter. It's the Muslims, it's the uh, lesbians, it's the gay, it's the minority, it's everything. So I would love to switch the hat with him. And if he can be in my shoes and I can be in his shoes, I would be very hard to swap those places. Yes, it is true. It may be true that it's a minority in a small systematically that may be a problem here. However, if this gentleman has five kids and one of the kids is sick and one of the kids is not well in school, one of the kids is being bullied or one of the kids is not being welcomed, does he accept that in society? Does he accept that in the community? I, for one, would not be. And he hasn't met me, but I am 6'1 or 6'2, 250 pounds. I don't get emotional. I don't get emotional. This is a subject matter that got me this emotional. So if he does not hear this, if his heart is not open to this, I truly, truly welcome his emails, his, his, uh, his, his representation at the CDC, Cape Diversity Coalition, and also reach out to me or anybody to just one handshake. Well, right now is not the right time to do the handshake, but we'll do a high five or something. We can't even do that. Anyhow, we'll just smile at one another. So anyway, the point is that please do continue to come to these meetings. Please do go and do come to tomorrow's uh, 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 school board uh, a meeting as well, a workshop in, in this subject matter. Because I truly, the fact that you're here, I'm happy. The fact that you're here, I'm truly, truly happy. Because maybe, if nothing else, if nothing else, maybe we'll learn one thing out of 10. And that is good as a win for me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to take a comment from uh, Jenna and then Paul, um, and then we'll close the comment period. Jenna, it's going to take me a moment uh, because you have an older version of Zoom. I need to promote you to a panelist and then I'm going to have to uh, bring you back down. It'll take me a moment. I apologize for the delay.
audio might not be available. I'm sorry, I, I see you promoted as a panelist and we have the video available, but it does not allow to have audio apparently. So can we I not apologize. take, we I, can't I, take Shannon's comment. I don't think we'll be able to due to the, it's, it's saying that it's an older version of Zoom. Uh, it would need to be updated. Um, uh, you can call in on the, on the numbers that are listed with the agenda. Yes, uh, that's, that's another option. If you wanted to, uh, excuse me for just a moment, uh, if you'd like to call in, uh, apologize for the having to read this, but it's 1-301-715-8592. And the webinar ID is 956-9329-0895. Okay, so we'll take Paul's comment. If Jenna comes back, um, we'll take that comment and then we will close the public comment period. Hi, uh, I, in case I didn't say this before, Paul Seidman, 21 Oakview Drive. Uh, I think one of the things that um, I will share a concern about is um, that I think as we all move forward, there will likely be some response and some of it may not be as welcoming. And I just want to put that out as something for all of us to consider, you know, sort of like what happens when that rises up. Um, I think that in some ways, um, you Chief Paul, I won't make you speak because your mouth is full, and uh, <laughs> and Matt, you know, and Valerie, you may, you know, in a sense, you may be finding this directly, but I also think it will be, you know, the, the citizens of color who may experience some of this too. So I just think it warrants some thoughtfulness and, um, but I'm so happy you're doing this and just want to thank you so much. Thank you. Um, do, do we have Jana here now, or is that the leftover square? I don't hear anything, so I'm guessing just a leftover square. Um, I, I believe so, Madam Chair, sorry. I'm just in the process, I'm efforting that in the background, I apologize. Um, it looks like Shukriya has her hand up again. Um, I do want to make space, but um, in the interest of moving on to the action part of the meeting, um, this will be the last comment. Thank you. I apologize. Um, uh, I have to think twice about for raising my hand up again um for i know we don't want to go back and forth but i just want to mention that this um this meeting is to voice um uh, concerns by the people of color and it would be very appreciative that the people of color are calling in and they're having issues um we do see the amazing amazingness of Cape Elizabeth as a location, as a town. It is, we are here because we want a better education from our kids. We are here because we like the location of the town. We understand that. I, we understand that. We are not here. We are here to just let people know that it, more can be done. Well, I, I'm, I don't know if this gentleman is a person of color. Um, there is some privilege that goes with a certain, you know, color in this, in this country and globally and, of course, locally. And I just want to let you know, if you're moving into discussion, please consider the comments coming from the people of color. Um, it... For me, it's, uh, as not to mention, it's very hurtful. Um, when we say black lives matter and someone comes and jumps and says, uh, all lives matter, 
I am getting emotional too. My voice is changing. Um, I appreciate that he has an amazing, you know, a great experience in Cape Elizabeth. I think a lot of us do. Um, but when something is hurting, when a group of people are hurting, we need to we need to um, acknowledge that and not just say, "I'm having a great experience in Cape Elizabeth," because there are others. There are other people of color, brothers and sisters are suffering together. And it's very hurtful to make a comment like that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, we're moving on to the council meeting at this point. And I wanna thank everyone who commented this evening and put their voices out there. Um, we all heard you and we appreciate that you took the time to make such thoughtful and eloquent comments and emotional at times. Um, and we are hearing you. Um, so yes, Matt, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> I double clicked, uh, I apologize. Uh, just a quick question, Madam Chair. Would you like to go to the council uh, meeting end of that or would you like to have the agenda and then go to the meeting side of it? I just wanna make sure I had your, your context correct. Sorry, the, the workshop meeting. Thank you, I apologize for the delay. Okay. Um, okay, so just to sort of lay out how I envision this proceeding, um, this is a huge issue. Obviously, we're not going to be able to do everything this evening. Um, but I see this as sort of a jumping off point. We can accomplish what we need to immediately this evening. That's why we have the, the meeting following the workshop. Um, but I think some of this is going to be identifying what our next steps will be, laying the groundwork and then planning those next steps. Um, so moving through the agenda, the first item is reaffirming our um, resolution. And I wanted to start out this discussion by posing a question for the council. Um, do we want to simply reaffirm this resolution or do we feel that changes need to be made to the resolution um, before we reaffirm or adopt something different? So. I see Penny has a hand up and a hand up. Go ahead, Penny. Um, I believe that there are um, changes that need to happen. Um, and so uh, I think there are changes that we can kind of uh, discuss out of the shoot here. Um, but I would also, if we progress to a point where we are establishing a, a, a group that is created by um, the council here that this would then be um, uh, put on their kind of um, agenda of sorts but I think there is some truing up that we could do to this right now and then it may need uh, additional work in the future. Um. Matt, is it, would it be simple for you to put that resolution up on your screen share? I can do that right now, Madam Chair. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Um, and then, Penny, did you want to elaborate right now or should I take? Sure. Care? I, I'm more than willing. Oops, where'd you go? Oh, there you are. There you are. You're down in the corner now. Um, I am more than willing to elaborate. Um, and. Uh, these are just these are just my thoughts in the world. Um, number one, I believe that the first whereas statement in this um, uh, resolution is a um, based on where we are from a um, administration perspective, and I don't want to go there too far. Um, I don't feel that at this point in time we can say the United States of America is a country um, uh, where we're at 
relative to that. I think we have always prided ourselves in that, but I think there has been significant damage done around that. And I just wonder if we can um, make that statement uh, a bit more that we don't necessarily agree with some of the directions that our uh, country has taken over the last couple of years, because I think it's been um, very damaging from a um, for immigrants and refugees and uh, people of color. Um, I also believe that um, I was thinking about whether there would be um, an addition to our one, two, three, fourth whereas statement, and I will throw this out. I'd love to, I know we aren't going to get into a long dialogue with our um, attendees, other attendees here, but I think that where we have uh, the town's collective values against discrimination, violence, and hate. I think it really needs to be collective values against. Um, I am so um, glad, and maybe glad isn't the right word, that we can now say racism again. Um, and because uh, diversity always seemed a bit too soft from my perspective, because I think we need to make some strong statements about our values against racism, bias, discrimination, violence, and hate. Um, I, and I think we need to say those words and we need to say them strongly. Um, I also believe that um, the section about now and therefore be it hereby resolved, I think there needs to be a, either a fourth, I, I mean a fifth, statement or we can rework these that um, that the town of Cape, Cape Elizabeth will seek to ensure racism bias discrimination does not permeate our departments and I I think that says that we need to ensure that we're uh, putting forth some strong education um, throughout our um, uh, for our employees across all departments and that it needs to be um, uh, done um, in, in an ongoing fashion, not in an event fashion. Um, it needs to be something that um, is touched uh, every, every year or something along those lines. So it, we need to make sure that we uh, also seek diversity in uh, staffing um, as well as in our committees and uh, town government. So those are the things that I thought of that could strengthen this. I, I was part of when this was created and it was, um, it was very difficult at that time to get the council to uh, even want to embrace this because I think there were people who did not see that there was a, a challenge. And so I think some of what was intended got a bit softened. Uh, I also think that in order for it to get passed, it was put forth in, in, in a way that it could happen, you know, the resolution could get um, accepted by the council. So now I see that it's time that we can now put a more set of powerful words here and that we then also say what are the actions we are going to take to ensure that this isn't just words on a piece of paper. So that's kind of my thinking at this point in time. Um, Penny, do you mind just quickly jotting down in an email what you, the changes you wanted to make and sending them to me and I can start a copy paste into a new document? All right, Chris, did you have a comment? Uh, sure, um, uh, let's see if I can pull a number of threads together here. Uh, 
I'm going to begin by going into the nitty gritty of this document, which I don't necessarily think is the direction we should be necessarily heading tonight. Um, and I'll get to that in a second. But uh, I think that first whereas clause just needs to be struck because it's patently false. Um, uh, if you look at uh, the number of the uh, restrictions that we've placed as a country and whether you look back to the colonial period with respect to Catholics or you look to restrictions that were placed in on Southern Europeans in the 1920s, uh, it, it, it's a litany. We don't even have to talk about anything in the last 50 years. It's just that that first whereas clause to me is patently false. So I would just strike it outright because um, I think if anything, this country has for significant periods of time not had that viewpoint. Um, so for that reason, I'd strike that first whereas clause. Um, I did um, in <laughs> uh, just, uh, the problem is whenever I say it, they would, I, I, I don't want this to come across as defensive, but I do want to point out that I, um, ever, uh, I can't speak to how things were historically in Cape. Um, I was actually very curious. I was uh, knowing Eliza, I view her as a reliable narrator to use that phrase um, in the sense that uh, I was kind of uh, hoping that she could, uh, she would speak at some point as to what things were like back in the uh, 15 years ago, because knowing her, I, 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 I trust her to accurately depict things. Um, but at least this year, I know the eighth grade class, um, uh, we had the entire spirit series with Harriet, I think it was Harriet Tubman. Uh, they did, a, they spent a significant amount of time on that and also on the Civil War and Reconstruction and whatnot. So I can't speak to what has happened historically, but just from a uh, point of view as to, it was someone with an eighth grade student, I do, and this is really falls into the school's realm, not ours, but uh, with respect to the, the content that's, that the school is focusing on, uh, at the present moment, at least in the eighth grade this year, um, there has been a, a focus. That could just be particular teachers, but again, that, that kind of find, falls outside of our wheelhouse. Um, but to point out which direction I wanted us to be going. So I, I guess my concern always ends up coming back to resolutions like this. Uh, it's kind of a, um, they don't do anything. Um, I mean, they make people feel good, but it's the substantive action is what I'd, I'd, I'd like to see us. I, I shouldn't say it doesn't do anything because it, it's meaningful that, we, that if we all get together and we express that this is the, the voice or the opinion of, of the elected officials of the town. So it's, it's not fair to me to say it doesn't do anything, but substantive action is, um, uh, is what I would like to hear. And with respect to uh, um, Nazar's point, um, although I totally hear you, you want to hear us speak, but uh, the problem is, and you know this is a, a being on the school board, it's, um, it's easy when people come in, people can come in and they can say, oh, we want you to, you got these problems but often we have no clue what a solution is. And when people present us with prepackaged solutions or suggestions, it helps because it gives us an idea of a direction to go in. Um, and one of the speakers noted, um, oh, you know, what, what steps have we taken to, uh, to deal with low income housing, economic diversity in town, things like that. Um, and I think, so taking from this, what, what are action items? What are actual, um, uh, what, what are substantive uh, actions we can take at this point? Um, I wanted to point to John's comment about um, the, the comprehensive plan. And that's something that we can directly address to recraft the direction that we want the town to go and come up with concrete items uh, to, for, for change in the future. Um, and uh, Oh, and I, I did want to thank the gentleman for uh, who expressed a, uh, a, 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 a viewpoint that wasn't um, uh, uh, shared with most of the other speakers. And I did just want to thank him for raising the contrary viewpoint. Um, if we reach the point where I need to, I will shoot down the All Lives Matter movement and explain why that comment is not, why that doesn't work. But um, so far we haven't needed to do that. But I do thank him for bringing that up because it, and it goes to Nazar's point, which is another great point, is that the entire point isn't <laughs> where you're, you don't want to convert the already converted. The, or it, it, the point of all of this is to have a discussion. And only by having a discussion where you acknowledge the strengths and the weaknesses of your point of view and others acknowledge the strengths and weaknesses of their point of view, do we, through that process, end up in a better place at the end. And that requires us to have a conversation that requires people to be willing to come to the table and uh, discuss these issues and be 
and, and deal with the fear of, oh my God, people are going to reject me. Oh my God, people are going to be angry at me. Oh my, I'm going to be targeted because of the fact that I'm willing to speak my, my mind. So it's important that people do feel comfortable coming and discussing this with us. And it's a chance for everyone to become more educated. So, uh, and beyond that, thank you everyone for, uh, for all of your comments tonight so far. And uh, that will be it for me for the time being. Thanks, Chris. Um, all right. Anyone else want to jump in on the um, resolution? So by a quick show of um, Zoom hands, oh, Jamie, go ahead. Sorry, I couldn't get the hand up. Um, so um, first, sorry, I wanna just thank all of the people that spoke um, so far. Um, and I really appreciate hearing all of their perspectives uh, and, and um, the viewpoints that have been brought forward tonight. Um, I just wanted to speak briefly on the resolution um, that's up on the screen at the moment. And, and mainly just, um, you know, some people uh, in their comments talked about it, but I'm not sure um, that, I'm not sure how much of the audience joining us tonight or even, you know, certainly folks on the council have as much familiarity um, with what this statement is and, and um, uh, the action that the council took back in June of 2017 when it passed it. So um, as a few of the speakers alluded to, the Cape Diversity Coalition, um, which I, you know, I think had been formed, um, um, you know, with a different catalyst uh, for action, um, but, a, but a similar objective and purpose, um, as was said, brought forward something um, that was at the time being, um, being discussed in many other communities uh, in the area. Um, and I think it was something that they similarly brought forward to the school board um, to review and, and um, take action on. And um, what, what the intent of it was, um, and I, I agree with you, Councillor Adams, that, that you know, we probably fell short of our obligation to it uh, in terms of it, it, it should have been more of a springboard to action um, as opposed to just a statement of purpose uh, and left there. So um, I'm glad that uh, what, I what I wanted to do to sort of touch back to it um, was number one, whereas there are many people, you know, still actively engaged from the Cape Diversity Coalition that were instrumental in preparing this statement um, that we ultimately wound up approving. Um, there are many of those folks that are still involved here in this um, current um, state of affairs today that it just felt like a natural bridge um, to sort of tie back to, to some of that work. And, and, and frankly, to hold our feet a little bit to the fire and a little bit more accountable to things um, that we already made a commitment to. I, I don't have any objection to updating it as appropriate, but um, I just want to sort of I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to sort of remind folks or um, if they weren't aware of it to begin with, just explain um, what action, uh, you know, at, at least in words that, that the council had, had moved to take a few years ago. Um, so anyway, that's, that's all I wanted to say about that. Um, Valerie. Um, I, I'd like to um, thank Jamie for, giving us that explanation because uh, not being on the council, I wasn't sure how it all came about. So it's really good to hear how that came about. And I wanna thank everyone who spoke tonight. Your, your voice is very important to us. It's, it's wonderful that you're here and that we have this opportunity to um, look at these issues. And I'm just wondering, um, Chris talked about striking the first whereas and um, Penny talked about um, adding to it. Do we wanna um, talk about that tonight and get these changes made tonight? Or do we wanna put this into our, what I'm guessing is our new committee that we're putting together to look at? Um, 
I'm just curious if how everybody wants to do that tonight. Um, yeah, I was actually just thinking along those lines. I do think it's important for the council to make some kind of statement this evening, but it may not necessarily be this resolution because as Jamie noted, this came out of, this was sort of inspired by something different and we don't want to just sort of re-up on a resolution that doesn't quite fit what we're doing. So um, Jamie, did you want to? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I actually think I was, I, I think kind of the opposite you know, if, if what I what I look at is sort of picking up, for lack of a better term, this isn't the most elegant of it, but picking up where we left off, but then actually pushing forward more actively, like we should have done three or four years ago. Um, and certainly, there's been you know new things that have come before us that have you know spurred a different level of sort of consciousness and action around certain things. But my my idea of this wasn't to just sort of say, hey, this is what we said before, and this is good enough. I, I don't want that to be the impression that people are left with. My, my, my motivation for this was more, this is what we already said, and, and, and we did get people to agree to. Let's have this be the new square one from which we move forward from, and there be more that follows. Um, so I, I wasn't intending for this to be the definitive and final statement, but the first of what you know I hope would be many. And you know I know that there's further discussion we'll have as part of this workshop around um, other more declarative statements that can be made that are more sort of pertinent and relevant to this specific moment we're in. Um, but um, my, my sort of callback to this specific document was, was more sort of, like I said, sort of reminding where we left off. And, and so that's all. Chris, yes. Yeah, and I guess um, I don't have a alternative document to put forward at this point, but yeah, the, this, the document doesn't address the, um, the, the, the issue that's out there where it is um, the, the focus on uh, the fact that there is one particular subset of society that has been uh, um, unequally um, subjected to uh, brutalization that the rest of society hasn't been. It, both that and uh, the other issue that we've seen continuously over the last month, which is the, and obviously this isn't happening here in Cape, but the, um, the uh, violence being directed at uh, people engaging in the right of free speech, um, in, to the extent that that also would be part of what we're seeing now in affirming uh, the point that we, we support people's right to engage in the freedom of speech without fear of uh, retaliation uh, in physical violence. Um, what do counselors think about adding in, uh, because Jamie has a good point that, you know, we don't necessarily need to, this isn't the end, it's the beginning. So. What do counselors think about adding into the fourth whereas Penny's um, racism bias before discrimination, violence, and hate, and then adding a fifth point in the resolution that simply says um, commits to substantive action? And then we can move on and talk about um, you know, our, our more particularized statement and also the, the potential for a committee. Uh, Penny, go ahead. I, uh, Valerie, I think those are two great suggestions. The, the reason I wanted to note uh, some level of uh, changes or tweaking is that um, I think it's important that the uh, a, a committee, if we form one, understands, um, has a feel for where the council is, is coming from. And I think those nuances help to kind of strengthen this, even though it is a springboard, it's the starting point. I think we need to be clear about uh, how uh, actionable we want it to be and how 
we see this as a, uh, a challenge or a problem in our town. Um, one thought I had about the committee, and you know, we can see if we all kind of agree on this direction, is that we may need to have an entirely separate meeting to develop the charge for the committee, um, because that's, that's a big topic. Um, so would counselors, I mean, do we think it's a, a good idea to, to make those changes to this for now and then move on to talk about the committee and statement, Jeremy? Um, I, I, I think that's probably true. I think we also could potentially get some of that work done with a few ideas from counselors tonight, and then perhaps the appointments committee could take a first stab at pulling together that charge that we could review with the full council. Not to speak for Valerie. Okay. Looks like she didn't mind. Um, go ahead. I agree. I think the um, appointments committee can can take this on and put together that charge, unless the entire council would like to do it. it it's it may be something that um, we can talk and get together right away to start on this. Okay. So in terms of this particular resolution, and um, just queuing up. But an item for the meeting to follow um, by a show of hands. Do we are we satisfied with the adding in racism and bias to the fourth, whereas and adding a fifth um, resolution that says commits to substantive action? Um, are we striking the first whereas or? Um, I don't know if we, do we want to strike the first whereas? Um, I think it's such a fallacy. I'm sorry. I, I'm with, I'm with Chris. I, yes. <laughs> what, it's what we hope our country is, I guess. Um, should we just strike it entirely or replace it with something? I mean, I kind of think we could just strike it entirely and start out with our with our first whereas, which is a good one. Um, yes. Yes. I think let's, we let's should start add. It. Should we add um, race or something to it, or just just to you know broaden it a little bit, uh, Jamie? Um, I was just gonna say, I mean, it sounds like the majority of the council is in agreement on striking the first, whereas I, I, I just disagree with that. But um, if I'm in the minority on that, so be it, but. Um, okay, Any, anyone else disagree with striking the first, whereas? I can't see everyone at once with this view, so I missed some of the, the facial cues and stuff. Um, okay, so it does sound like the majority want to strike the first whereas, start with the second whereas. Any other changes before we send it to our meeting? Jeremy? Um, yeah, I, I, I think it would be good to if our first whereas is going to be whereas native and foreign born residents of many faiths and cultures, I think it would be good to add in there um, an, uh, a phrase to the effect of, um, you know, of all racial and ethnic backgrounds um, have ri richly contributed to the quality of life in Cape Elizabeth. Um, Valerie? I agree, Jamie. I think, that, uh, Jeremy, I think that's a great idea. Uh, I was just going to mention the last, when you said number five, you're saying commits to substantive action. Are we going to say what kind of subst substantive action? Are we going to say um, to combat racism, to promote diversity? Are we going to, 
are we going to say what our substantive action is, or are we just going to say commit to action? Um, I guess that's that's up to us. Do we want to say that specifically in here? And does anyone have um, a recommendation on the wording? If so. I I think uh, I think Valerie Devereaux makes a, a, a good point and is our um, substantive action around um, our um, let's see it was in my head a second ago um, because it's about our um, department so our employees it's about uh, our um, policies it's about our um, I would say um, hiring practices it's about education across our community um, those are just some examples of substantive actions that that I would I would see um, it's a review of our comprehensive plan um, those kind of things is that too detailed do you think um, Jeremy did you have a comment on that yeah no I think that's right Penny um, and I also you know I as much as I appreciate Nasser's comment um, asking us what's possible uh, the, the one hesitation that I have at this point um, about spelling out what exactly we're going to do is I, I, I don't have any sidewalls on this yet. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think everything is fair game for us to look at. Um, and so I don't want to start a whereas clause that's going to limit the future action that the council may decide to take once we've heard from more people and um, engaged in some of the deeper discussions that we need to have. Uh, so I think, I think a, a whereas that is gen somewhat more general um, and to the effect of, you know, commits to substantive action to combat racism in all forms to, uh, as it may occur in, t in town government or, or uh, something along those lines is kind yeah. of where I'm at at this point. I like that. Just to clarify, I had been, I intended that we were going to put not another whereas clause, but a number five committing to substantive action. Sorry, I must have misheard that and I, I actually think that's better. <laughs> um, uh, Valerie, go ahead. Well, to be more inclusive, we could, we can say including but not limited to, so it doesn't limit us but at least we have something in there saying what we're going to do, what kind of substantive action we're going to start with at least. So it doesn't just say commits to action, but we actually have some action words, some things we're going to do. Uh, I think that would be helpful. Um, okay. So I think what maybe makes sense is, um, and where I was coming from with commits to substantive action is more, I guess, that we we spell out kind of where we're coming from in the whereas is, and then um, welcome, condemn, affirm, and encourage. Um, so I kind of was thinking that the the committing to substantive action action we can just sort of pull from that. So it, what might make sense is to just draw some of the language from above um maybe from the last whereas uh, commits to substantive action in representing our town's collective values against racism bias discrimination violence and hate or something something along those lines um but uh Does that make sense? 
Do you have a version in front of you that you're editing, Valerie? I do. Okay. Um, I, I don't. I, I don't want to make you have to edit on the fly, but I, I, I'm glad that you're capturing it. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm preparing it for the meeting. So. Um, if someone has some specific language for the committee to substantive action, there, there were some supporters of that. Do you mind just giving me some phrasing? Or are you opposed to just taking that, that fourth whereas, um, yes, Valerie? I, I think the um, the words that you said were were perfect. Uh, combat racism, improved diversity. You were sort of you were taking that forth, whereas and creating the substantive action. I thought that was perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to read you what I have. Um, if anyone thinks there are further changes, we can make them. And if not, we will pass this along to our meeting. Um, okay, so I have taken out the first whereas. In the now third, previously fourth whereas, I added um, in the second line, uh, representing our town's collective values against racism, bias, discrimination, violence, and hate. And then at the bottom, I've added a number five that says commits to substantive action to combat racism, bias, discrimination, violence, and hate. Um, any comments, changes, additions before we... Can you reread that fifth one again? Commits to substantive action to combat racism, bias, discrimination, violence, and hate. Don't, don't we need to say something as it relates to um, policy? Um, but et cetera, and hate. So combat it as it relates to um, uh, or across our town or um, within our um town government uh policies and decisions or something along those lines i can go with what you have but i think that that as it relates to peace that at some point we might want to play with so um i mean i'm open to hearing other perspectives i, I was kind of thinking this the resolution is broad and specific and broad mm -hmm. in the sense that, you know, substantive action from the council is those things. Okay. As long as it's implied, I guess you're saying it's implied. Right. That's because fine. that's what we do. Um, so yep. that's kind of what I was thinking, but does anyone else have a different thought? No, um, that's fine. I think it's, uh, I, I could, um, it's just nuancing it, and I don't think it's that imperative at this point in time. Okay. Um, so preparing for that meeting, Matt, do you want me to email this to you or to Deb, or, or how should we do this with uh, Chris? Go ahead. I just do want to raise a point at, um, for at least the, so we can say that we discussed it, even if I've, all of the rest of you say, ah, no. Um, so my approach with taking anything along these lines is um, not to go into too much into uh, political theory or whatnot, but uh, there's this guy, John Rawls, that some of you may know. If you don't, I encourage you to go read about him. Um, but basically, he, he would often delineate what's the, what's the scope of what elected officials should be engaging in. Um, and he, and I can't even do justice to his theories, but he basically said, he, he would say that a elected body, uh, presumably he would say that an elected body 
basically uh, should be wading into, in government should be wading into these uh, political arenas um, only in areas where it, where all reasonable members of society should be agreeing. And beyond that, um, we should be avoiding government speech um, if it's areas where there is a reasonable disagreement as to the public, what is good, what is the good way to live one's life. Um, I say that because, so I, I subscribe to that view because I always think, okay, what if it was a different elected body that had contrary views to what I have? How would I feel if they used their power to speak in a way that I disagreed with? So I always try to put myself uh, to you. <laughs> Nasser used a phrase I was unfamiliar with. Uh, I think he said hats or whatnot. Um, if I if I wear wear that besides hat, um, and uh, I look at two, I look at three, I look at four, I think about the new five, and each one of those, I'm like, I can't see reasonable people disagreeing at all with these points. Uh, the only one where some people would disagree with would be portions of number one. I personally agree with number one. But does number one go uh, wade into that realm uh, where I'm not necessarily comfortable with it? Because even though I agree with it, it's an area that I don't necessarily know if I think I want government weighing in on. So I just wanted to note that I've thought about that and it does give me pause and I'm not certain about it. Uh, even though it's something I agree with, should we the government be speaking on number one? And the other point I wanted that's going around in my head here is I, I can't, recall if it was uh, Nazir or, one of, or, or his daughter, noted um, people having issues, uh, uh, I think it was at this meeting, not something I'd heard previously, about uh, ill treatment on the bus and whatnot and um, bad statements or uh, Ill, Ill intent statements from children in schools and whatnot. Uh, I just wanted to note that people can sub, uh, subscribe to the view of, oh, that's just a statement by a kid. But the thing is that kid's learning it somewhere and they're learning it most likely at home. So it provides us a proxy as to a mindset that does exist in our town. And obviously we can't be the thought police and we shouldn't be the thought police, but with respect to what we take out of this, um, there it is a litmus to the fact that there, there is a worldview that does exist into our, in our town uh, by virtue of the fact that the children of this town are expressing uh, viewpoints that uh, some of us may find repugnant. Um, so bear that in mind, and I don't know what we can do to address that, but in looking at what we should be doing going forward, uh, we do need to be cognizant of that. I hear you, Chris, and as a fellow political theory scholar, have thought a lot about that as well. Um, and I guess the conclusion I came to is that at this point, there, this this is good and something that we need to model. Um, but, you know, you don't have to vote in support of the resolution if you don't want to. <laughs> um, any other thoughts on what Chris said on the resolution? Um, Valerie D. Um, I was just looking at number one, looking, thinking about Chris's thoughts and really what it says is we're, we're welcoming residents of all cultures to, to live without fear. So I, I agree with that. We're welcoming people to live here without fear. Um, and that's basically what that's saying. So I, I think, um, number one, to me, I think it makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to finalize that document, uh, send it to Matt to queue up for the meeting. Um, and then I believe, although I've lost my agenda at this point, I think the next item is a, our statement. So, um, okay, yes, our sign and proposed statement. Um, the potential proposed text we have is CAPE rejects racism. Hate has no place here. Also up for discussion is the form of the sign, whether it will be on the um, 
electric sign or if perhaps we want to have a sign made. One thing that Matt and I discussed is the possibility of having a sign made so that we wouldn't run afoul of the sign ordinance using the wrong kind of sign. And then um, maybe having the type of sign that people could actually write on and it could be used in conjunction with an event moving forward. Um, those are just some thoughts I had. In terms of the text of the sign though, let's start there. Um, I think the, the message we have there is, is nice and simple and straightforward and conveys the point, but I'm open to hearing suggestions on what we might do differently or whether we're satisfied with that. How about just a show of hands on who likes the message of the, the proposed sign language? I'm so, I'm lost. Where's the sign language? You're muted. It's in the agenda. It just says, Kate projects racism, hate has no place here. We also did receive uh, some email comments about the sign, um, maybe taking a little stronger stance. Um, one comment that I kind of wanted to make also, which we've already discussed a bit tonight, is that um, freedom of speech does go both ways. So by making this statement or by making any statement like this, we're opening the door for people with opposing viewpoints to also um, put up their own signs, ask to put up their own signs, state their opposing viewpoints. So that is um, the nature of that particular right. And I don't know if we want to let that guide our discussion about what the sign should or shouldn't say. Um, but I, I'm happy to hear from people what they think about that. Jamie. Um, before that, I, I just wanted, um, if maybe Matt and or you, Valerie, could take a minute to, I know, I know there were a lot of discussions um, in the last several days, uh, reaching out for some guidance and direction from the town's attorneys, and just wondered if, um, for the benefit of all those that have joined the meeting tonight, if you could maybe give a, a high level summary of those discussions, Matt and or. Valerie. Uh, uh, may I, Madam Chair? Yes, if you could do that, I can edit that document while you're while you're doing that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'll give my best. Uh, yes, uh, speaking with the town's attorney, there are. Uh, I asked him to provide a memo, uh, which is the, now up on the uh, town's uh, attendee packet for this evening from uh, from Mike Hill, and uh, discussion within the firm had identified that. Uh, the council would be within their rights if they wanted to put signage up. Uh, the uh, and and uh, the other part of the conversation that I had with them leading up to that was also, as uh, Chairman Adams had had identified, was that once you do, in a sense, break that seal, uh, you do open the opportunity for others who may have a message that is contrary to or competing to what you may want to put up there. So. Uh, Historically, the town has never put signage up on their on their properties. I think to to try to avoid running into that as a conflict. Uh, however, uh, there is that uh, the council does have that ability if you so choose to uh, want to pursue that. Uh, the other question was regarding the electric sign. Uh, you know, the, our message board sign that we do have. I have provided the the former electric sign policy to the council as well as uh, the 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 sign ordinance and. Uh, speaking with Code Officer Ben McDougall, I uh, would find that use of the electric sign for pr promoting any other sign outside of wayfaring or directional uh, signs or to public safety uh, would be uh, outside of the ordinance or in violation of it. So uh, just wanted to follow up on that as well because I know that issue was brought up uh, last week as well. So uh, that's pretty much where we're at. And I know Councilor Adams uh, with their background also uh, has a uh, uh, a high level of understanding as far as uh, freedom of speech and uh, the the triumphs and prat and, and and pitfalls that may come from that. So uh, I hope that's helpful to the council.
Jamie? Thanks, I appreciate that. Um, I first want to, uh, as it relates to a message from the time, I first want to say um, unequivocally and without hesitation that black lives do matter. Um, and it's unfortunate that that is, uh, a, you know, in the eyes of some, a potentially controversial statement to make. It shouldn't, in my view, be something that is, um, you know, uh, a liberal or conservative point, a left or a right point, a red or a blue point. Um, it should just be a, a, a human statement. Um, the, the, the one part I'm conflicted with as, as it relates to, um, and, and Chris kind of touched upon this a little bit in, in the comments he was making about um, the point number one about the resolution, is that Black Lives Matter is both an organized movement advocating um, for change and adv advocating um, uh, about a, a specific issue. It's also a, a specific decentralized network of organized chapters uh, and is a specific entity. And so I know that, um, you know, one of the things that is where, where as a council, we're in a difficult um, position to consider here is that dual meaning and, and whether or not you're um, uh, promoting a message that, like I said, should be should be apolitical, um, but is also a specific organization, um, and that has been brought up. There are other organizations that we could easily be asked to promote in the same manner. Um, that I, I just don't know, um, you know, from the, you know, from the uh, Supreme Court sort of standard of of creating a slippery slope. Uh, where do we want to go uh, with that? So, um, so I'm, what I'm what I'm trying to articulate is is how I feel personally, but also um, uh, I think the difficult position that uh, we're collectively in um, in terms of how we craft the wording on this. Thanks, Jamie. Caitlin, I just. I want to say I, I agree with exactly what you're saying, Jamie. I feel the same way. You have your own personal beliefs and what you'd like to do, but at the same time, we have to think of the rules and, and the consequences and the down the lines of what the town council would be faced with. So I'm in that same spot. Yeah, I, I actually had um, a really similar dialogue in my head going on the past few days, Jamie. So thanks for bringing that up. But, you know, I wish we could just say Black Lives Matter on the sign, but do we then align ourselves with the movement? And then I thought, um, which I'm not personally opposed to it and in support of that, but I don't think as a town it would be appropriate to align ourselves with a political group that has a mission statement that maybe is more political than is appropriate for this body to take on. And I was wondering if we, I mean, Black Lives Matter as a commitment to the group and their mission statement um, tends to be with capital letters. And would it be, because I really was trying to find a workaround, could we put Black lowercase l lives, lowercase m matter, because we, w I mean, that's a message that we want to convey. And I heard from a constituent um, about her children driving around Cape Elizabeth, seeing all the signs and how powerful it was for them. And I so want to be able to give them that at the town hall. Um, Valerie, your thoughts? I, I, I too have thought a lot about that. Um, my concern as, um, as Jamie voiced it, is that uh, since it is a, an organized group and if we put it on town property, we may have to, then we open the gates to putting other groups um, signs and messages on town property. That's a, that's a tough, that's a tough one because I agree with Black Lives Matter. I just don't know that we want, um, it could be a neo-Nazi group, it could be anybody. Um, and it may be a group that the majority of town doesn't agree with and we wouldn't 
we may not necessarily want to put that sign on town hall. That's why I, um, after thinking about it, am leaning toward the Cape rejects racism, um, hate has no place here, because we're saying what we feel and believe. And a lot of times when you go into towns, they'll have um, a sign with population or a sign that has like a, a statement on it where it tells about the town. Uh, I, I think I think this is a, a really good way to approach it for now. I was hoping that our attorney could give us a little more um, uh, guidance on it. But as you stated, Valerie, it, it's, um, it may open it up to other groups. So um, I'm really conflicted with that right now. Chris? Yeah, uh, for uh, basically reiterate a number of the points made, <clears throat> but at the same time, I do want to address um, the aspect of uh, why not the all lives matter um, solution. And as I was alluding to before, um, the issue that, uh, so in order to strengthen one's position, you often need to acknowledge where there is a legitimate uh, argument to be made against one's position. Uh, and by doing that, you can then turn and strengthen your position by addressing the critique in order to, to make your position stronger. And there are reasonable people out there that find the phrase Black Lives Matter divisive. Um, to, uh, to ignore that um, contributes to the situation that we find ourselves in, in society where we have two groups making points that they're just talking past each other. And because there isn't an actual conversation, um, we, we never seem to, we never get anywhere. It's, I, I guess we are getting somewhere now. But it, it, unless you have that middle ground discussion where one side raises a point and the other says, okay, I see your point. Let me explain why, why, why all lives matter is not the solution. We never get anywhere. So I'm just going to say personally why all lives matter is not the solution. And one could view it as divisive because it does mention one single, it, it singles out one group. But the entire point, and this goes to what, how am I bringing this up with the Cape Rejects Racism, because the, the drawback of, our la of the proposed language, which I don't know if we have anything better, it may be the best option. Uh, the drawback is the point of Black Lives Matter, uh, for me, it, it isn't that it's elevating one group over the other, it's that there is one particular segment of society that has been historically subjected to repeated institutionalized uh, unfairness. And that's it, it, to, to extract that group from the phrasing, the problem is it leaves us not acknowledging that historic uh, problem that, that, that uh, we, we should be acknowledging at some level. Um, so yes, um, it could be deemed devices. Yes, it m would have been better if perhaps if the language originally as proposed had been black lives do matter or black lives matter also. Um, but it, 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 many times the all lives matter is used disingenuously just as a way to criticize the phrase. Um, but the point is to acknowledge the one, the one group that has historically been subjected to, to the problems that we're, we're, we're seeing. Um, so us extracting that group from the statement gives me, gives me pause uh, for that reason. Um, and if you have two, and to finish the All Lives Matter point, uh, if you have two phrases where neither of them is perfect, uh, it goes to the, the Rawls thing. It, when you're structuring society, yeah, uh, when when having to choose between two competing choices where neither is the the ideal perfect, uh, y you should often um, err in the direction of the group that's marginalized or has less power, um, because that normally uh, contrib contributes to fairness. That's why I would say that the Black Lives Matter approach would be better. But as everyone noted, the problem that it is an actual entity, um, and what do we do if we take one entity and say, hey, we're going to in any way promote you? In, the, in this public forum, or, or <laughs> I just use the magic words, if we're in any way going to promote you uh, uh, on town land in a town sign or whatnot, are we creating, let's call it a public forum where we've now uh, in effect created a, bu a bulletin board where anyone is now permitted to um, post their messages on that location. 
And if we can toss aside the name of the entity and instead it's something that everyone should agree with, a phrase like Cape rejects racism, no reasonable pe person can disagree with that as far as I'm concerned. That is, that is, that is the, that is not, that is an apolitical statement. Hate has no place here. Again, no one, no reasonable person can disagree with that statement. Um, but I do, I, I do want to at least give voice to and acknowledge in that we, we have removed the segment of society that is otherwise being acknowledged by the statement. Thanks, Chris. That was an important thing to say. Um, okay, it sounds like a majority of the counselors, Penny, yes? Um, I just want to, um, I understand the point about the Black Lives Matter and, um, and the slippery slope that can create. Um, I do want to say that um, uh, Kate rejects racism, I can, I, I can go with that uh, part of the statement. The hate has no place here. Um, uh, I, I understand why it's there, but I think there's more power in just K projects racism that's gonna start a lot of dialogue because people are going to drive by, they're going to see that, and they're going to start talking about racism in Cape Elizabeth. And some people are going to say it doesn't exist, and their neighbor's going to say, yes, it does. What about? Um, so I want to put a statement that causes people to reflect and, un and understand that um, many of us, um, uh, and I think one of the one of the people who spoke tonight, she did so very eloquently. You catch yourself many times um, with that self talk of um, that can be interpreted as uh, racist, and um, and I just would like to go with that one um, statement that's very straightforward. But I'll do what others want. Okay, quick show of Zoom hands for the initial statement. And then um, we'll follow with another one. So for the initial statement, um, Jamie, Chris. Okay, quick show of oh, oh, Jeremy. All right, um, and then show of Zoom hands for Penny's statement. Chris twice, Caitlin and Jeremy again. Jeremy and Chris, are you, can you clarify your positions, please? I'm fine with both of them. Yes. I, I can see both sides of the argument. I, I appreciate Penny's comment that, that simplicity, you know, makes for a powerful message, but uh, I, I think, I, I agree with both statements. Okay, so for the initial statement, it was Jamie, Chris, Jeremy. Um, I also like, I appreciate Penny's comment, but I, I like that the also strength of hate has no place here. Um, so just so we can get a consensus moving forward, um, it sounds like that's the statement or yes, we're good with that. Um, okay. So the statement moving on to the meeting upcoming will be K projects racism, hate has no place here. Although Penny, I I do appreciate that point and I'm, I love free speech and I love the dialogue that is created. I think it's really important. So I hear you. Um, okay, Jeremy, did you have a question or a point? 
Uh, well, I was just going to ask um, sort of the details on what the next steps are in terms of getting a sign up. Are we are we proposing in the in the meeting that we would vote on this and then have a sign made that could be placed in front of town hall or some other location in town? Right. So that's the next part of this discussion is the actual sign. Um, can, can I, Valerie, can I just add something? Yes, please do. Um, one of the reasons why uh, the part of that statement, hate has no place here, I don't know how to explain this, so I, if anybody takes objection to it, I apologize up front. Um, I don't consider myself a racist, but I know that I have uh, inadvertently um, made a comment that could be considered racist. It was never intentional. Um, I know that I can uh, have judgmental thoughts, like what's that person doing in my neighborhood? Um, and those are racist things, but I don't hate. And so when I see that, I think we can create a stronger dialogue around racism if we, if we help people understand that everybody, and I'll use white privilege because I am white and, um, that everybody has racist thoughts and you can deny it but test yourself for a couple weeks and you will find that they pop into your head um, and you don't consider yourself a racist so there can be racism unintentional that isn't tied to hate um, and so I just, I see that hate has no place as diluting the fact that racism permeates our society, even though we think we are good people. Jeremy? Yeah, I, 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 that resonates with me, Penny. Um, I, I, I agree with that. And I also think the downside to including the hate has no place here part of the statement, um, maybe to expand on that just a little, is that it, in some ways to me, it, it makes it easy to say, to, it makes it, it makes the, an us and a them situation where, you know, here I am sitting saying Kate projects racism and hate has no place here and aren't I such a great person? Because um, it's them over there who are hating. Um, and I, I think it's probably useful for, for many of us, um, certainly for myself, to, to sit with our discomfort a little um, as we're going through these issues. Um, and to the extent that that simpler statement helps people perhaps sit with their discomfort, um, I, I think it's more powerful. Okay, so Jeremy is now a vote for Penny. Um, I have to say, Penny, you've also convinced me. Um, I like that. So, does uh, that mean I can be with you in a courtroom and win? <laughs> oh. No. Um, so, so let's just well do do the vote again. Um, so, zoom hands for um, K projects racism. Period. Chris, Jamie, Penny. Caitlin, Valerie, Jeremy and I have already expressed that. Okay, so unanimous, K projects racism. All right, um, so the form of the sign. Um, Matt, do you mind just doing a quick 
um, preview of the, the town attorney info on that? As far as uh, the, the language or, uh, or you'd like me to reach out to him to get uh, direction as to? Oh, the, the actual sign, um, the physical format of it. I, we had talked about how um, if it's a electrical, it. Okay, yeah, perhaps. but yes. Yeah, it, it may be best uh, at this point to, if, if you were going to put up a sign, uh, you, we would reach out to the code officer, get what the conforming uh, dimensions would be, and then, uh, and then uh, produce a, a hard, uh, you know, basically a hard stock sign versus a uh, the electrical sign, because if we put up the uh, electronic message board sign, we would be in violation of the, of the ordinance as it's, as it's constructed. Um, so my thought was that we could have that sign made um, fairly quickly. I don't know what other counselors think about the idea of a sign that um, could sort of be moved around and um, part of other discussions. And uh, Jeremy, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I fully support having that sign made fairly quickly and also to one of the um, people who spoke earlier um, made a comment that I thought was very insightful about how you know many of our not quite public but our you know our, our quasi public fora for for interaction with our neighbors aren't available to us now um, I think it would also be worthwhile as we're developing that sign to make sure that we make any of the, you know, the PNG or the JPEG images of that graphic available on the town website um, in case there's other folks in town who want to use the same graphic for other signs or uses that they'd like to. I, I think it's useful. I think it may be useful to have more than the presence of a single sign that says that. Jamie? Um, my, my question just had to do with, uh, in reading through the sign ordinance, one thing that stuck out to me as potentially tripping us up on this is I, I don't know whether or not this falls under the category, um, and Caitlin's probably the, the most um, in tune with this given all the work that she and uh, had put in at the time on the side ordinance, but does this fall into the category as defined in that ordinance as a temporary sign? You're on mute, Caitlin. I think that's where it'd have to fall. Uh, that, uh, if, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, Councilor Garvin, that is, uh, I believe, uh, what Ben was looking at it as as well, uh, where I think that's an eight. I think that's an eight-week. Uh, item and then uh, then a break and then you could do it another uh, another period as well. Okay, that was my follow up question is I didn't know. I didn't know if, what what the process was if you wanted to put something up again or you know. It's, I think it technically has to be a different sign. That's that's kind of how I read it. So, so like you can put one sign up for eight weeks, take it down because in a calendar year is the language that's in there. Yeah. That. And then so. I literally have a whole new sign. It can say the exact same thing, but it's a new sign that goes up. Yeah. So I, I know that this is like major down in the weeds, but it's, it's important stuff that we can't overlook just so that we're not doing something that runs afoul of our, of our ordinances. So, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not advocating for, only having it up for eight weeks and saying, okay, we've checked that box, let's move on, because that's, that's not my position whatsoever. But I'm just, I'm just calling out the detail in the ordinance so that people are aware. Um, what, what do we think, uh, Penny, yes, go ahead. Um, what, I'll just throw this out, that why not develop a series of statements so that uh, for the first eight weeks, it's we reject racism. For the next eight weeks, 
It could be um, something else that keeps people thinking more. <laughs> it's this psychology of signs I'm getting into. Gets people thinking more deeply um, about, about racism. We started at this high level of we reject it. Now, is there something that as you peel that onion, you can throw, throw out there on another sign? And I'm more than willing to give this some thought and send along some ideas. But it's almost like having a, um, um, a subliminal way to get people really thinking about uh, how racism permeates our society. Um, Penny, that's, I love your mind. Um, I love that idea. What do we think about maybe putting an agenda item on for um, our next council meeting to decide what the next sign will be? And then we can sort of have this standing message that we'll look at, which keeps the issues going throughout our meetings. Um, Jamie had his hand up via Zoom and then Jeremy. So I think that this sounds like um, an awesome thing for the future diversity and inclusion committee or whatever that winds up turning into shortly um, to take a look at and come back with the kinds of recommendations that would help guide us in that decision making. Um, I, think, I think we can make an affirmative statement um, to start with here and then and then take our um, guidance from from a group like that. Jeremy and then Chris. That's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, I, I personally love the idea, but from a government uh, official perspective, um, it gives me significant pause to have us committing to uh, engaging in, let's call it government speech on a uh, semi-regular basis. Um, and it's something that we, I would encourage us to be very, very, very cognizant of uh, what we put on it as we go forward, because I, I'm always loath to have the government speak on issues, um, even if it's something I completely agree with. Uh, Penny? What? Did I raise my hand? Yeah, yeah you raised oh, your hand. Oh, sorry. I... Okay. Um, okay, so it sounds like consensus is we have a temporary sign, Kate projects racism. Our next agenda item is to talk about the committee. Um, and we will look to their recommendations for action moving forward on the sign issue. Um, we can always make another sign and, and put it up again um, if that need arises at one of our next meetings. So um, do we need to take an action on that at the meeting following this or? If I may, Madam Chair, it may be good to provide direction to the manager to uh, uh, have some signage, uh, like to pursue some signage uh, that, that states Cape, Cape rejects racism, uh, to have some temporary signage. And uh, I could bring it, and we could, I mean, if you want to tell me how you'd like to have it, that's the thing. It's, uh, you know, how do you want to design that do you, uh, color scheme? Do you want a simple uh, black, you know, white, white on a black? Uh, field uh, thing along those lines. Uh, we could get that crafted by one of the local printing houses uh, if you wanted. I, mean, I just don't know how you'd like to have that design. That's all. But I'd be happy to take direction from council if you wanted to tell me what you'd like to have done. Um, I don't know what other people are envisioning. I just sort of envisioned that it would be white background, black writing, because that sort of stands out the most. Um, any other thoughts on that format? It's not especially creative, but um, it's just a bold statement. Um, are, is everyone sort of in favor of that, um, that idea? So we can provide Matt some direction. Yes. 
Yep. I, I'd say I, I have received direction, so if you just want to take action on the next, uh, when we get to the council side, uh, I'll be happy to uh, uh, take this direction and, and, and run with the ball. Chris? And we obviously, outside of that brief comment about color and whatnot, we didn't discuss the other details of the sign, but it would obviously just be in compliance with the sign ordinance, obviously. Okay, so the item on the agenda for the meeting is to authorize the manager. Is that what we're doing next? I think that would, I think that would work great, Madam Chair. Okay. All right, so final Oh, we've, it's, it's not the final one, but uh, the next item is to discuss um, the uh, committee. And there was a recommendation that we task the appointments committee or an ad hoc subcommittee of the council with developing a charge for a to be appointed diversity and inclusion advisory committee um, to focus on issues relating to, but not limited to racial just injustice and creating a positive and welcoming environment for all people in Cape Elizabeth. Um, so it sounds like the appointments committee is ready to take a first stab at this, which to me sounds like a great idea. Um, and then we can kind of come together as a council and review it. Um, does anyone, disagree with that general process before we get into details? No. Um, before tasking that appointments committee, um, I wanted to give counselors an opportunity to sort of throw out um, direction for the charge that they might have. Jamie? Um, not so much for the charge directly but as far as the composition which is typically part of the charge is um, I think we've heard quite a bit of commentary both here this evening um, in the uh, forum that Chief Fenton um, hosted and at um, directly from um, people at the at the uh, two demonstrations and, and rallies in town speaking to um, the change that they're looking to affect within the school system and specifically within the curriculum. Um, so I think it'd be important that there be representation on the committee from either a school board member, um, a, a, a school administrator, or potentially both, um, and also um, uh, a student as well. So um, that would be my strong desire in terms of, of seeing how the committee is put together. Um, and then the other thing that there, because it's a brand new committee, um, that there be staggered um, terms uh, so that there's appropriate turnover like we have on other committees. Um, so my, my assumption out of the gate would be that there'd be openings for one, two, and three year terms um, in order to ramp us up uh, to into that natural cycle of turnover. And then the last thing is just, I think, question for the appointments committee as they think about it is um, most of our committees are seven people. Um, I don't know if that's enough in this case. Um, so it would be certainly something I'd, I'd at least be open to hearing some discussion around in terms of um, should it be more uh, uh, in order to have the best representation possible on the issue, so. Uh, Jeremy and Penny, I'm not sure who had their hand up first. I'll go Penny, she um, has blue hand. I agree with um, Jamie that uh, I think the group needs to be uh, larger than our normal seven, especially if, uh, um, have school representation. My question that I'll throw out is 
um, and maybe Matt can find out about this, is, is the school looking to do something sim, oh, Jeremy's naughty. Is the school looking to do something similar on their side of the world, on the school side of the world? If so, uh, it could be that we cross pollinate the teams, the groups, and so there's a um, representative from the school group on the town group and vice versa. Or we agree that there's one team of people, but I think the school has, this isn't a judgmental statement. I think they've got a significant set of challenges uh, around this whole world of racism and um and so they may want to have their own group dealing with those issues so i think we need to figure out what they're going to do as we're putting this team together if i may madam chair uh, I'd be happy to speak with uh, Superintendent Wolfram uh, about this as well. Uh, one, it may be a great opportunity for the council and the school board to collaborate uh, together. I, I would think at this point in time, because I think many hands make uh, light work or lighter work. There's nothing light about the subject matter, uh, but I think uh, the perspective uh, from a community-wide basis, it's a, a big opportunity for appointments from both sides. So. Uh, that's where the, the appointments committee may have a challenge or at least may want to uh, uh, have that conversation uh, as far as how uh, the appointments are made from one side possibly being from the school allocated with X amount of uh, X amount of bodies and uh, from the town side Y amount of bodies and then uh, that way you could have equal representation as well as uh, full perspective so I think uh, you would probably accomplish the most uh, with that with that makeup it's just a question of uh, you know, not uh, not making decisions for the school board, but I think based on their their conversation aimed for uh, tomorrow night, uh, and knowing this is an opportunity, they I would think uh, they might find this as a as a as a golden chance to uh, work together. Um, Caitlin and Valerie, I was just going to comment about the makeup of the group. We like we redid the sign ordinance, we redid the boards and committees ordinance as well. And we made sure to streamline so that they're all consistent and the same because that's how the town wanted boards and committees to be. So if we're going to deviate from that, that's something else we need to consider. Are we considering making this a permanent board or committee, what we're going to call it? Um, then we also need to adjust the ordinance of boards and committees, and it should probably fit with what the boards and committees are designed now. So it's just more things that we need to think about. Um, you know, it's an important issue, but at the same time, the town does things in a certain way, and we need to make sure we're doing things so that, you know, we're not creating exceptions to the rules and then creating exceptions to the rules. So just thoughts. Valerie and then Jeremy. Thank you, Caitlin. I think that's a really good point. One, one of the things I was thinking, and we can talk more um, with the appointments committee about this, is if we don't have more than seven people, maybe we uh, bi-monthly, the group meets with the school um, diversity group so that the both groups have a joint meeting where they meet together every other month or quarterly or something to where there's an interaction between the two if we end up not making it a bigger group because we really can't make decisions for the school board or for the school but it'd be great to be able to talk to them and work with them so that's an option we have too something like that where we can um, set it up to where we meet with them bi-monthly or something Jeremy? Um, yeah, I was going to make a similar suggestion that, that may also speak to the point Jamie raised of, of ensuring that we have um, enough 
space for people who feel that they want to be part of this to have a, a place to participate. Um, and then to, to Kate, one of the points that Caitlin raised, I, I would suggest uh, kind of as a question, but um, I'll make it as a suggestion that, that uh, we should probably think about creating this as, a, as an ad hoc committee um, with the thought that one of the recommendations that I'd like to see from this group is how we integrate this work going forward. They could ask us to create a permanent committee, but they may say, you know, we just like to see better representation throughout standing committees elsewhere in town government. And I'd be open to either of those suggestions. So. Uh, Jamie? Um, I just wanted to point out, following up on Caitlin's point, there's, there's nothing broadly in the boards and committees ordinance that spells out that each committee has to be seven people. Um, each individual committee is it, it's it's part of each individual committee's how it's written into the ordinance, uh, which this would also need to have happen, um, and uh, uh, go through that process. But um, the the uniformity of the state of the boards and committees is around um, terms and sort of um, what we call them and all that kind of stuff. But um, I think each one of them has its own membership qualification. Okay, so um, generally taking all that into account, are we um, comfortable sending this to appointments for them to sort of put some pieces together? See a lot of nodding. Um, I had just some thoughts on the charge, um, and you know I'm happy to follow up with these by email, just for input for you two or you three. Um, but uh, my thoughts are we need to have the committee identify necessary training that has not yet been implemented for town employees, possibly um, all committee members, and also the town council itself. Um, explore the possibility of developing non-conforming undersized lots in partnership with Habitat for Humanity. Um, Matt helped me out with that idea. Um, or town lots that may be developable <laughs> to create more affordable housing. Um, because in speaking with a constituent, um, one of the issues that came up, um, that person is Black and she contributes greatly to our community, has kids in the schools. Um, and that person said that without the affordable housing, um, they would not be able to be here. And so that was identified as a key issue that we need housing. And this is a possibility and Matt had indicated that Scarborough um, did something like this. So there is precedent for it. Um, look into the, the possibility of expanding public transportation to make Cape more accessible and identify opportunities to honor um, the history. I, I put black history, but I think also more generally um, history of marginalized groups, possibly um, creating a Juneteenth holiday and naming landmarks in town after um, people who are underrepresented. So I'll, I'll shoot those over to you guys in an email or to Valerie in an email. Um, but those are just some of my thoughts on the charge. Chris. Obviously, um, I agree with much of that, but the infill housing to make the, I do not think that should be included in there. Again, it's the filling in the uh, de facto open space in traditional uh, subdivisions where they were built prior to the need for the open space standard standards. Um, Again, you're trying to fix a problem by creating a bigger problem, in my opinion. I think there's better ways to go about it. So I would not include that in what you look at, but otherwise, that's it. Matt, yeah. Madam Chair, one, one other uh, item as well, uh, interacting or speaking with Rachel Davis, our uh, librarian of uh, the library is poised and uh, 
very uh, eager to help out as far as uh, providing opportunities for programming uh, to continue community discussion and provide opportunities for uh, discussion as well. So uh, that may be an area that uh, the committee may want to consider, but uh, and there's also organizations that they may make recommendation that the town consider uh, joining uh, as far as uh, opportunities for training that the town uh, on all levels can, can uh, benefit from. That website you sent, Matt, was wonderful. Wonderful. Pretty awesome. Pretty yep. awesome. Yeah, thank you. Jeremy? Um, I, I just wanted to note, um, as I'm watching the time, uh, that I think by my count, we have three items that we would need to vote on in the town meeting before 10 o'clock, um, or at least start before 10 o'clock. Um, I wonder if we want to flip from the workshop to the meeting at this point. Can, we, can also vote to, we can also vote to um, suspend those rules. We, we've done that before for okay. other meetings that have gone well past 10. Penny, yep. Yeah. What is the um, uh, time frame that we're giving the um, appointments committee to come back with recommendation? What does the appointments committee think about um, getting together those thoughts. Let me just pull up my calendar. Um, are we a little late for the July meeting? I don't even have the date of the July meeting up here. Uh, council is on July 13th. Um, do you think, uh, appointments committee people, that you could have some ideas to us July 13th and then we can um, have that as an agenda item at the council meeting to take further action? Yeah. I think that, I think we could do that. Um, we also have a workshop on uh, July 6th, <clears throat> so maybe we can all meet next week, our appointments committee. I'll, um, uh, Caitlin and Jeremy, you can meet next week. Caitlin, does next week work for you? Okay. Then we can uh, figure a date. Matt, um, can you look at the calendar for us real quick and see what dates are available for us to meet next week? Just popping that up right now. Uh, the, the one item is uh, next week, the, uh, the th obviously you're not gonna meet on Friday. That's the one day we'll be, the, the building will be closed. I'm just trying to get my calendar up here. I apologize for, there we go. There we go, sorry, I was just a little slow internet here. Uh, next week is wide open at this point in time, uh, Monday uh, and Tuesday at least are, are open, um, flipping to July now. Uh, and the first and the second are both, there's no meeting scheduled uh, the first four days of the week. All right, what, what does everybody think about Monday the 29th? Does that work for you, Caitlin? Okay, let's say Monday the 29th, then um, 7 p.m., or do you want to meet a little bit earlier? Are we meeting at the town hall in person? Like an actual meeting? I can set that up for a Zoom, uh, a Zoom meeting. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you will then have a full bingo card, counselors. You will have five Mondays straight. I know. I know. All right. All right. For, you, for those of you keeping score at home. <laughs> okay, so that'll be at 7 p.m. then on um, Monday the 29th. Okay. Okay. Um, and for our upcoming meeting, 
just trying to keep track of the actions that we need to take. Um, so that will be refer. Oh, my brain has ceased functioning. Yep. That'd be uh, to refer, refer to the appointments committee uh, discussion to set up an ad hoc subcommittee uh, uh, or sub, uh, a subcommittee of the council uh, for a diversity inclusion and uh, diversity and inclusion advisory committee to focus on issues relating but not limited to racial injustice and creating a positive and welcoming environment for all people in Cape Elizabeth. I just grabbed that from the agenda. Yeah, I did. <laughs> could I, could I, I'm sorry, I'll raise my hand. Uh, if we keep using diversity and whatever committee that's going to become its name. So can we kind of charge the, um, the appointments committee with coming up with a name that isn't so uh, puff, you know, cream puppy. Thank you. Um, maybe when it comes to the uh, what we're referring, we just take out the diversity and inclusion advisory committee, but just to. Uh, um, committee, charge the committee with developing a charge for a to be appointed committee to focus on issues relating to, etc. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So we have one more item on the agenda for the workshop. Um, I had asked that this be put on because it was something that we'd received a number of emails about the, the idea of defunding the police. Um, I did the, the whole discussion seems to have petered out. There was a great forum um, put on by the library. Um, Chief Fenton and Matt were there along with DA Sarbeck. Um, and it sounds like a lot of the issues um, were aired in that forum. I don't know if anyone on the council has anything related to this that they feel needs to be brought up for action? Uh, Penny, yes. Yeah, I keep, uh, probably only because I keep having conversations with people about it. I keep getting emails uh, um, uh, about defund police because I'm trying to kind of peel the onion in a conversation, a, a conversation with people to kind of get at what is it that we're, we're actually, uh, on uh, trying to achieve and um and i one of the things and i don't know if anybody has contacted um chief fenton i i kind of wanted people to start understanding um the concepts and the connections that our police department has with social service agencies today um i think um uh, one of the conversations I had really got down to um, an, an, an issue that um, not everybody feels as, as comfortable uh, going to the police with an issue as I do because it's, um, it's the way I was brought up and, um, I'm a, and I'm a white female. Um, now, if we went back 30 years ago, I might not be comfortable going to them. But anyway, now in this day and age, uh, I am comfortable going to a police officer if I was uh, sexually molested or um, a domestic, domestic violence situation, etc. But the issue that came up, uh, what somebody brought up is if you are a, and we were talking female stuff, if you were a woman of color, you may not be as comfortable um, approaching um, a police officer, even in Cape Elizabeth. Um, and I, you know, started me thinking, okay, okay, I got to look at it through a different lens. Um, and so it says to me, each one of these, when we get to the crux of the issue, each one has a, a solution. 
and um, I think it's getting to those those um, what are the things that people are really getting at today it it, it really has to do with uh, one conversation that um, uh, police officers dealing with people with uh, mental health issues it should really be handled by a social worker etc etc now if you're in a mental if you are in crisis and you have mental health issues and you're in crisis and yes a social worker can help kind of de-escalate the situation but you also need a police officer there for protection those are the things that some people don't really understand i really think we need to find a way that people understand um, how our police department operates i also believe that there is an element within this group this committee that we are putting together that um, that that merges with some of this defund police that there are elements of that that can get uh, addressed and maybe paul should be the staff person on this group i'll just throw that out um because we might be able to address two two challenges with one group that that's just my opinion Valerie um, I, I agree Penny and that's that's sort of how I saw it is that this um, committee is going to look at those issues also and um, give suggestions on um, do we need um, a group that is an advisory for complaints, police complaints, or we need to talk about all those other issues also. Um, so I think that's really important for this committee. Penny, do you have any questions you, anything you want to bring up as far as our partnerships with our, uh, you know, community advocates? I mean, that is a continual yeah. thing that we're doing. It's not an occasional thing. I mean, just today, I was on the phone for over an hour with Through These Doors. Uh, we had a department meeting last week. Part of that, Officer Tammy Shafran did a two-hour block on domestic violence strangulation. Uh, and I called up today to talk with the DBI, give her some of the presentation and even talk about how some of the training, which often is, is cross-training, uh, led into an assault investigation that was not domestic in nature, but yet the strangulation factor came in through that training we had on Wednesday and ended up with a, with a felony charge of an assault that occurred in town yesterday. Um, but also even this evening, uh, we have a, a family that's in crisis. Uh, but once again, we're the de facto uh, people that when someone's in crisis, that's who they call. They call us. And then it's a matter of our officers are down there right when I started this Zoom meeting and we were in talking before I came in here about the different agencies that we're going to be reaching out to. Opportunity Alliance, NAMI of Maine, um, DHS, there's child custody issues in there, there's children in the home. Um, there's also going down with a rescue. But all this comes back to as well is what we do for the rescue, we do for all these community advocates, which is first we need to go in and make sure the scene is safe. People want to be safe. And talking to the advocates, even as of today, we brought it up because there is a lot of this talk and we're talking about that and they're sharing with me their concerns and their need for us and our need for them. Um, but at the end of the day, we do it for rescue as well. A lot of these scenes, we go in first for rescue to just make sure everyone's safe. That's the priority with everything. Everyone has to be safe. You have to make sure that that's insured first and then we can work on those things. And the back story to that is as well, the reversal of that is if someone doesn't feel safe coming in here, it's my responsibility to reach out to groups and have a dialogue with them so that they can introduce people effectively. So if there's a domestic violence victim who ends up talking to through these doors, they are the conduit to getting people to come in here. Uh, the same goes true with SARS or different uh, sexual assault reporting services. There's different groups that we can do this both ways. I mean, as soon as I became chief, I reached out to the Cape Coalition of Diversity and went down and had a breakfast with them. Uh, and develop relationships that I've still uh, honor and I'm committed to today. So if people feel as though they need to go through that avenue, it's all about relationships. And that's really what it's trying to do and making people feel comfortable. And part of my commitment as chief has been doing exactly that, is to ensuring that we still have people in those places where we're reaching out into the community. We are part of the community and we need to remain so. Um, and any separation is only going to widen that gap between us being part of the schools. People, that's why we need Officer Dave. I mean, there's a, there's a call across the country to remove SROs. 
but he is universally beloved. He has given up so many inroads with the community and with the children, uh, which is where this all starts. The kids have to start off feeling trust with the police and having experienced a positive interaction with the police, more so now than ever. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm not making us the victim in this at all, but Officer Dave even mentioned uh, recently the kids, the little kids who aren't able to separate a lot of the, the material that they're seeing out there, which is the fault. We own it. We have to regain that transparency. But he said the adults were great. High school, college kids, especially at the protests were great. The little kids, he said, he's, and Dave was hurt. He's a good person. He said it hurts him now that some of these kids just weren't reacting to him. And he said, you know, where Where's the love? He said, I'm usually the biggest, it's biggest ego boost he calls is going to the preschool or, or the grade school to see those kids just treat him uh, like he's a superhero and to see that the kids are confused with that. And that's, that's concerning to me. Uh, you know what? Uh, we own it. We got we to gotta deal with it, but it, it exists. So, and I think that's really when I think of it starting, they say racism starts, any bias starts with a kid when you're young is to making sure that everyone's just comfortable with one another. It's exposure. And that's what we need. So. I think Paul, Paul, I think that it would be really beneficial for, because what I keep saying to people is how tight the police department is with social service agencies and getting people to the resources that they need. It would be great if some of the agencies like um, SARS and Family Crisis and Opportunity Alliance and um, all of these organizations would, would come out and start saying how their partnership with the police departments are important and how they work and how it's really a symbiotic relationship. But people aren't, people aren't aware of that. I know that. I, I know it. But I think that I, it needs to start being said by uh, uh, all of how this whole web works together. Is it perfect? Everything could always be improved. Uh, but there's such strong relationships there that um, I just think need to be understood by more people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it's a continual effort. Um, but we do, I'm, I'm telling you, we have great relationships. I, I, I invite anybody, don't come through me, reach out to through these doors and say, uh, I had a concerned citizen who's been sending some emails asking uh, pertinent questions as far as officers and internal investigations and domestic violence and uh, what they were concerned with higher rates of domestic violence with officers. I said, I'll give you my policies, but call Jen from through these doors. She's worked in this department for 10 years. She knows every single officer. She knows my policies. She knows my procedures. She knows our culture and how we focus on events. She knows the communication that we have. Don't read my policy. That's just a piece of paper. Talk to a human being who's dedicated her life to being an advocate and see if she's comfortable with the culture here, if she's comfortable the way we do things, if she thinks we cut corners. Um, that's what I think people need to do. There's a larger police issues across the nation, and that's that's a concern for me. Obviously, I got to live some of that, but at the same time, two people to realize that we're an individual agency here. We're th 13 men and women um, who have a great relationship with the community and a great relationship. And we can't, um, I can't stress that enough. And it's just going out and speaking with people and coming in. It's my open door policy. Come talk to me. Okay, um, we're running up against 10 o'clock here. Um, so, to, for a workshop meeting, do we need to vote to extend? Or is it just the regular? It's just I see Jamie saying no. Um, all right, so. so Jamie, we'll, we'll need, when we open the meeting with a formal special meeting, we'll need to have uh, um, a motion to be able to um, conduct new business after 10 o'clock in order to be in, in accordance with our rules. But the, there's no time limit on the workshop. workshop. I had, a, I had a different comment I wanted to yeah, add briefly, yeah, though. Um, so, Valerie, I'm really glad that you um, asked to have this included. And I want to, again, thank um, Chief Fenton and um, Rachel Davis and, and Matt for hosting the forum that they did um, uh, and, and being really open and transparent with the public um, in the questions that they had and, and, and giving so much of your time to answer those. Um, very specifically to the point about um, all of the communications that we were kind of re receiving and mass um, about this topic of defunding uh, the police. Um, I was very happy to hear it uh, communicated to the public at that forum, but would reiterate here for those that might not have been on that meeting, 
um, that here in Cape, we actually have the, the, the balance that many of the communities throughout the country where they're, they're raising their voice for this kind of change, we have what they're looking to achieve in terms of that ratio of um, public safety funding uh, to other priorities. So um, when you hear about this whole theme, um, I would look for, for ways that, you know, maybe we can go out and, and sort of promote uh, how we're doing it um, and show other communities how it works. And here in Cape, we have uh, a fiscal 21 budget that um, the police department represents about 3.3% of that budget. Um, comparatively, uh, the budget for public education is anywhere between about 66 and 70%, depending on what, what you factor in there. Um, so uh, I, just, I just really wanted to call that out and, and underscore um, you know, the fact that as a council and as department heads across the board, I think that we do a good job uh, in this community of listening to uh, the citizens and, and what they deem as the priorities and then appropriating uh, you know, appropriating taxes uh, in, in a way that aligns with those priorities and and uh, how they want to see it. So, I just want to thank everybody for that and um, and make sure those listening tonight were aware of that. Thanks, Jamie. Um, okay, so are we? all set with that item. Um, we don't need to necessarily take any action this evening. Okay. Um, so we are all set with this particular meeting. Um, we can adjourn the workshop and then reconvene in the regular meeting. Um, and Although I thought that my young child was asleep, he is in fact not asleep. So um, I'm gonna have to turn things over to Jamie for the- uh, I jinxed it, I jinxed it. You did jinx it, I, yeah, I went, to, I went to check and that's, yeah. So, um, okay, so this meeting is adjourned. Um, thank you everyone for really great discussion and we'll look forward to next time. Valerie, does Matt have everything he needs for oh, items? Oh, for that reminder. Um, yeah, let me just, I'll email him. Did I, I emailed it to you, didn't I? I have the, uh, I have the resolution uh, ready, ready to be uh, screen shared if the council so uh, desires. So I have that ready to go. Okay. And then, uh, that was it, right? Because the other ones were just authorizing and referring. Yes, and then, uh, yeah, no, uh, authorizing and then referring. That's correct, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. I appreciate your hard work tonight with a youngster in the background, so. <laughs> um, I appreciate all of you, and I thank you, Jamie, so much for, for helping out with this. It's been a balancing act. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. All right, good night. So with that, we'll convene uh, this special meeting of the town council for Monday, June 22nd, 2020. Um, Deb, do you, did we lose Deb? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Deborah just uh, texted me to let me know if she just lost her internet. Uh -oh. So I will be, um, I will be uh, trying to pinch hit in her, uh, okay. in her stead. I, I do apologize in advance, I do not have uh, a flag available in my office uh, at the time that I could grab quickly. Okay, I'll say lacking a flag and given the late hour, we'll proceed to the roll call. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilor Valerie Devereaux? Here. Councilor Jeremy Gabrielson? Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Here. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Here. Councilor Christopher Straw. Here. And Councilor, Councilor Jamie Garvin. Here.
Is there any uh, citizen that's uh, joining us that wishes to speak about something that is not on tonight's agenda? Now is your opportunity to do so. If you wanna raise your hand in the Zoom meeting function, we'll queue you up and recognize you to speak on something not on tonight's agenda. Nasser, your hand has been raised for a while. I don't know if you are looking to speak now about something not on the agenda or if your hand just never lowered. Hey. But your mic is open. Yeah, uh, so my hand was open for the items that you guys have discussed already. Is that just closed for the day and hopefully we can make comments on those matters some other day? Well, we're technically going to have that as our next item. And so there will be an opportunity for public comment on that. So this is as odd as it seems, given the single focus of the meeting and the late hour, technically every one of our meetings is to include opportunity for comments for things not on the agenda. So that's what this particular period is for. So there will be an opportunity for public comment, which I'll try and keep as, as efficient as possible in just a minute. But um, given that we just had a lot of co public comment in the workshop. But um, so if you don't have anything to offer on something not on the agenda, Nasser, Nasser I'm going to ask just if anybody else does. And if not, we'll move on. Move on, please. Okay. Is there anybody else in the uh, joining us from the public that wants to talk about something not on tonight's agenda? I don't see any other hands going up. So that being said, uh, the only item uh, on tonight's agenda is number 93-2020, and that is uh, action to be taken based on the workshop that we just held prior to this meeting. Um, uh, 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 so the, the one specific action item that we have is the resolution that we worked on the wording for, which Matt has. Um, Matt, do you want to, I don't know if you want to read it verbatim or just put it up on the screen. Uh, um, but while you're doing that, um, I'm going to invite uh, anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item to raise their hand. And we'll recognize you and open up your mic and ask that you limit your comments to about three minutes in length. So I know we had a lot of people that spoke during the workshop. Now is your additional opportunity as part of this specific meeting, if you want to raise your hand and offer any comment. I don't see any hands going up. I'll give it just another few seconds because I don't want people to be shortchanged if they want to say something. Uh, I see Nicole Boucher's hand first. So Matt, when you have a second, can you open up her mic? And Nicole, uh, if you could give us your name and address, please. Yes, I'm Nicole Boucher. I live at 14 River Road. Um, so this is commentary on the signage. And I just feel like it's a little bit too, it doesn't say anything. It's like, racism is bad, the sky is blue. And so what's the point of putting it up? Um, and I understand the not wanting to be affiliated with a organization that you don't know all the details about. So I wonder if there's a different approach to it where maybe, I mean, in my industry, we have hashtag Black Lives Matter or hashtag BLM. Um, so that can still kind of come across without seeming like you're supporting um, an organization you don't know all the ins and outs of. So that's, that's just what I want to put out there as an idea. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Nasser, you're up next. And if, again, you don't mind just giving your address. Nasser, are you still there? There we go. This is Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Nasser. That's the share 41 Ocean Household Cape Elizabeth. So can I only make comment on reference resolution or can I make comments about the committee as well? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so in reference resolution, um, last four years we've been basically wa wasting digital hardware space for lack of the uh, better word, 
uh, rather than collecting dust, it was collecting uh, hardware space. And we haven't actually taken uh, much action. Tonight, I pour my heart to you as well as my family, and I would really like to see some uh, solid uh, actions. And those solid actions have been identified, which is great in reference to the uh, diversity committee. We do not know what the title is, but what I, what I envision, maybe it's the same vision, what I envision for a committee to be funded by the, by the town, and uh, this committee's role will be to make sure that person or person from the committee sits on a hiring committee when the school is hiring, when the police is hiring, when anyone in the town is hiring, and the person has to be there. This particular committee has to have pe people of color as well, which was not mentioned. And so this should be a similar committee as like Fort Williams and other. The funds will be utilized by program to introduce to the town uh, that is uh, empowering or professional development in reference to uh, diversity. So I think this particular group should cater to the whole town in reference to uh, diversity. So that's my take on that. I would really like to see the town council identify funds, particularly in general assistance. And I haven't seen how Scarborough is utilizing his time, uh, but I would like to learn about that as well, because uh, I think we have articulated and found out that we need to give the uh, tax incentives or support for down payment or incentives for landlords to provide affordable housing. We know for a fact that uh, places like uh, Avesta and housing State housing is not welcome in Cape Elizabeth and it may never be welcome, but that's not my argument. If that's not the case, let's work with small business owners and small developers to work on that issues. In reference to um, the language and science, um, like Nicole said, it is what it is. A sign is not gonna make a difference for me. But yes, if I see a sign going to town hall registering a vehicle, I'll be proud to say, okay, I'm welcome over here. If my kids see it in school, they will be welcome. If the police can see the sign every day of going out the door, it will be great. But more important, I would love to see the sign that says Cape rejects racism on the police vehicles. If you can do that, you have won my heart. And I would really love, love uh, uh, Penny's idea of multiple signs that, that, that uh, I was changed. And I've already come up with three or four of them that I will, I will change or share with you via emails. Uh, and so this back to this uh, diversity committee, this should be a check and balance for everybody. So if, if you town councils are hiring committee, you all think alike, but this, of course, you're gonna be choosing someone like that. But if you have someone of color, someone a little bit different, they hopefully that person will change your mind and, uh, and actually more importantly, will bring the resume to a top so that person can be interviewed. Uh, and I thank you, uh, everybody, especially uh, Valerie, who, who, who had a, a, a ch young child and was keep crying in the background. I thank you all for your service, and uh, uh, I hope to uh, provide more information. I'm always here for you guys uh, via email and uh, in person, too. Thank you. Thanks, Nasser. Is there anybody else from the public that wishes to offer a comment at this time? I don't see any hands, so going once, going twice. Okay, uh, are there any counselors that want to uh, offer any response to any of the, either of the comments that were made? Don't have to, I'm just presenting that opportunity. Okay, um, so up on the screen, um, um, actually, I, I do want to make a comment before we move to that. Um, just in response to Nicole's comment, um, I, I think what I just want to try and distinguish between is, is um, I think your comment was very specific, Nicole, about not wanting to affiliate with an organization that we don't necessarily know anything about or anything like that. And I, I just want to, it, I'm not trying to nuance it, but what 
what for me the difference is, and I think what I heard during the workshop is um, just affiliating with any specific organization of any kind. Um, it's not it's not necessarily um, that here's an organization that we don't know about or anything like that, but but rather just um, whether or not it's an appropriate role of town government to to um, make that affiliation. I do like the idea of um, you know if if there is another way to convey the same sentiment, um, and and I I hope that that is something that um, the committee that we've talked about putting together here as we're looking at different messages um, can continue to explore. Um, but I just wanted to, I, I just wanted to offer a brief response to that. Um, so moving on to the resolution item. Um, so Matt has it up on screen. Uh, if I don't know, know if it needs to be read in full or not, um, but it is reflective of the discussion we just had in the workshop. So. Um, if everybody uh, has had a chance to look at it, I'll entertain a motion uh, on the resolution. I move the resolution as presented. Motion Second. by Councillor Gabrielson. Second. Second, Second by Councillor Penny Jordan. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, Deb, I see that you've rejoined us. Um, can you give us a roll call vote on this, please? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And Matt, did we need a specific motion on the authorization to you as the manager for the sign is it did you yeah, want maybe, that form? Yeah, yeah if we could formalize it okay. to uh, direct the manager to uh, produce a sign based on the discussion at the workshop uh, stating Cape rejects racism and I and I think I've got enough other detail from the workshop that I can go ahead with uh, uh, that from there mr. chairman so is there a motion um, from any counselor at this point uh, to that effect? So any? moved. Yeah. Is there a second? Councilor Devereaux? Any discussion? Seeing none, Deb, could you read the roll again? Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, thank you. Is there any um, other motions on anything pertaining to the actions taken in the workshop? Or the discussion? I wanted uh, to re refer to the appointments committee, uh, the creation of uh, or, yes, or thank you. the creation of the, of the uh, diversity committee to be named. So on that item, is there any counselor that would like to make a motion? Penny? Um, I move that we um, charge the appointments committee with identifying the um, make up the roles, responsibilities, et cetera, for a committee to be named that will address uh, racism and inequality in our community. Motion by Councilor Penny Jordan. Is there a second? Councilor Devereaux? Any discussion? Seeing none. Go ahead, Deb. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councillor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councillor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. With no further actions to take, is there any, oh, Matt? Mr. Chairman, if I, if yep. I could just jump in with one quick moment on an update, uh, just uh, at the end, uh, middle of last week, uh, we had a potential exposure for COVID-19 in the town office, and I just wanted uh, the council to know 
uh, that we've had two negative tests uh, that came as a result of the uh, of town employee who was. So first of all, I wanna say how extremely happy we are for that employee to not, uh, uh, to have those two negative tests and to not have the virus, but also we wanted to take the opportunity to let you know, uh, know that as well as that uh, we did reopen two appointments uh, this week and uh, but also let the public know that there was no exposure that took place at the town office. That's great to hear. Extremely great to hear. Thank you. Does it, I'll just uh, ask if anybody else has any, any other things they want to comment on or updates of any kind? Okay. Uh, is there any, uh, we'll again have an opportunity for citizen comment for items not on the agenda. Is there any citizen still with us that um, wants to talk about something that was not on the agenda tonight? I don't see any hands. So is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. I motion, move by we adjourn. motion by Penny Jordan, is there a second? Caitlin, any discussion? Thank you everybody for participating, for staying um, well past our usual appointed hour, I appreciate it. And uh, if there's no other discussion, Deb, one last roll call, please. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Straw? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Have a good evening. Good night. Take care.